course, Graham Glasgow and Carlton Davis um, met with the media. And we'll go through those press conferences and much more. We have John Macron also joining us at 845. So I can't wait for that. He'll, he was at the press conferences, so we'll get to talk to him. Some of his takeaways. But, fellas, how we how we feeling tonight? What's the vibe like today? Tonight? Feel good. Feel Beautiful good. day outside. Not a lot one, going on with one. the Lions, though. Good day. Good day. It is dark out now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is. He's not wrong. Uh, it, I looked out the window. I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, wow, it is dark. I've been oh, working shit. this whole time. Well, but like we start every show, I do want to give a shout out to those who were here at the very beginning. Uh, ETN, appreciate you always. Uh, he's a member, so that's awesome. Uh, Shift God, he's in the chat. Anakin Skyogre, we got Coach Walk, Eduardo O'Neill, Detroit Grit. We got Vincent Ellison. The people, the people are waiting. And I think the people are going to be excited with today's show, man. I'm, I'm, I mean, we got a lot of stuff in here that happened. No, we're not going to talk about Mike Williams. Um, well, we will mention it, but no. Uh, yeah. What's up, Lucas? Real quick, just to pop it up, shout out to Phil. He says, everyone do me a favor. I'm having a serious heart procedure in the morning. Positive thoughts. And I'm assuming you meant prayers. And uh, if you could, please. So shout out to Phil, man. Sure. Hope that all goes yeah, well. Phil. You'll definitely be in Absolutely. my thoughts. And everything will work out, man. You'll be good. Love you, Phil. 100%. Love oh, awesome yeah. prayers yeah. with you. That's that's huge. Yeah. I mean, anything heart-related, uh, that's significant. Uh, you got crunch time support. We're here for you, Phil. Thank you for still watching. Um, I'm, yeah, I mean, appreciate you, you it. You got yeah. a big day tomorrow and you're here with us. That means everything. So thoughts and prayers to you, Phil. We love you. Um, and fellas, there's also a player that plays for the Lions that a lot of Lions fans love. And his, his name is James Houston. And we talked about it with Dion yesterday because I, I'm i going to be honest. Like I, He caught me slipping because I didn't even know that he, he there was a, there was a, a, a deadline. Um, because he is, and, and you tweeted this out, Booner. Uh, Lions News, Edge James Houston has been tendered by the Detroit Lions per Justin Rogers. Um, that was a conversation from a lot of Lions fans the last few hours, and we got our answer. James Houston, because everyone just assumed James Houston was going to be back, which he is back, but th- there was a realistic chance that they could have easily been like, no, we're okay. Like, that that could have happened. I don't think it, it was not going to happen. I don't think they looked at Davenport and said, yeah, get lost, Houston. Uh, but he's back, fellas. He's back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. To be honest, too, I don't think it was. Uh, am I breaking? Oh, you guys, you guys all froze for me for a second. I was like, oh, no, no you're I just, good. I, my Wi Fi just went out. Um, I was thinking about though, I was, I would text you guys in the group too. I was a little scared. I was like, all right, we haven't heard about James Houston, and then there was like 10 minutes to go. And I, and I text you guys, I, was like, I don't know what's going on. Um, but then I spoke with uh, Jeremy Reisman, shout out, he's been on the show. Hopefully, we get him back soon. Um, and I messaged him too, and he, he was like, they haven't heard anything, but he was like, the Lions could have probably put something in and they just haven't announced it yet. So I, I think that's actually what ended up happening was the Lions didn't wait until the last minute. I think what happened was they knew what they were doing. They probably already spoke with James Houston. They probably already had it all. they like, hey, we're going to, you know, the whole tender situation. We're going to get that all done. That's It's a done deal. You're coming back. But it it would have been dumb if they did it. I think it's like worth, and I can pull the numbers up here. I think his contract's going to be like maybe a million. I think it's the cap hit this year. Cap hit is six hundred. Oh no, nine hundred and fifteen thousand this year. So if Jesus. you would have let in James Houston walk with the nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollar cap hit, that would have been like just an unbelievable mistake. Like, like, and there, there was just no chance that was going to happen. It, like, he would have hit the open market and he would have gotten not paid an insane amount, but he would have gotten paid millions. And you're that you would have had to pay him for way more than nine hundred fifteen thousand. Yeah, and I just think to your guys, what you kind of alluded to earlier, Jeff, with Marcus Davenport signing, if they would have had Marcus Davenport sign for six and a half million and like Booner said, James Houston walk for under a million, I, I there's not many times when I genuinely like question what Brad Holmes is truly doing, but that'd be one time not, not only would I be questioning it, but I would be pissed off because that you'd lose the Quar brothers, you restructured Kaminsky, and then you, you, re, uh, you sign Marcus Davenport and you lose James Houston. Your defensive line room arguably got worse if you let James Houston walk. So I didn't think there was any chance that he did leave, but it did get a little bit close to the wire than I think most people expected. No, yeah, I agree. I think it still needed to happen, but the fact that it took so long kind of worried you a little bit. And I still think we need to go out and get another guy. We can't just rely on these two. 
but uh, him and Davenport. But it's good to have James Houston back. He's a game wrecker, and he was definitely missed a lot last year. So it's going to be good to have him for a full season. Hopefully he gets through – obviously he goes through training camp healthy and then comes out ready to go next year. But, you know, we miss James Houston getting to the quarterback. And the effect that he's going to have on these new corners alongside playing the whole season with Hutch. So – Good, good to have James Houston back. It's a good day. I can't believe that they almost let this slip out of their hands. We have. News. I know what you're pulling up, Jeff. I was just about to say this the is news. Big. I just, this I just, scre- I got tagged in something and I screenshot it. I, I think it's this good news, big. but it's not like is. I don't know if if it's like. No, I think it's good news. I know what you guys people. are thinking with it, people. But... It's like it's like we're leading a cult. Everybody, come around, rejoice. <laughs> There is an NFL update. Sheldon Rankins and the Bengals are closing in on a contract <laughs> agreement expected to be done tonight. Sheldon is Rankins huge. is a what, fellas? A run-stopping defensive tackle. A veteran run-stopping defensive tackle. Some would say DJ Reader. <laughs> He's available. I think it's happening, boys. I think it's happening. Boys, okay, this – and I know this has to – This it's like a – it's telling you something. It's like subliminal messages, right? Like the Bengals. Yeah. Like, I, made, I made a video today. You can go check that out, kind of previewing and talking about DJ Reader and the impact he'll have on the Lions. And one thing I mentioned is I wouldn't be surprised if the Bengals bring him, uh, bring him back. <laughs> they got a defensive tackle, boys. There's, DJ yeah. Reader. Bring them home. There's, bring, there's bring one other home. team too. I, I remember like two days ago there was the reports that said the Bengals, the Lions, and Titans are all in, on, or they're they're the ones kind of pursuing DJ Reader right now. I could say this confidently too, and, and I showed you guys the messages. I did have a source that said DJ Reader has a lot of in, like he has interest from other teams around the league, and they want to bring him in the building. <clears throat> so that's where a little bit like if the Bengals do sign him. Or, or not, don't sign DJ Reader and sign him. I, I think, to be honest, like I don't think there's going to be a DJ Reader signing done in the next 24 out. Like when he goes and visits yeah. the Lions tomorrow, I don't think there's going to be like, like, I think a lot of people are like, don't let him out of the building. Like, do you guys remember my negotiation tactics with uh, Panay and Amon Ra? Like, lock <laughs> him in a conference room, don't let him out until they sign the deal. Like, I would love for them to go do that for DJ Reader tomorrow when he comes in the building, lock him in there, basically not kidnap him, but kidnap him and say, let's get this deal done. But from the sources that I have, and they were pretty they, – they seem credible. I showed you guys them. It seems like he's going to be like, all right, like right, I'm going to go visit these other teams and then kind of go from there. That's what it, I, the feeling that I got. I think that this this is huge, though, because like the Bengals were probably the number one option behind the Lions, or if not the Lions. So yeah. just get the deal done, Brad. This and is what I said, think – go ahead, go ahead, Gentry. No, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure the other team you said was the Titans, and I'm pretty sure they, they obviously signed Calvin Ridley today for a, for a, a pretty bad. big contract. I wanted to say it was like $23 million. I mean, whatever. But um, and I think they have a a meeting lined up with Jadavion Clowney too. So maybe they're kind of got their money allocated somewhere else, and that might have freed DJ Reader up for us. So, and the thing that I was going to kind of say, and you can even see this style in the draft with Brad, where you can act like if free agency was the draft, this would be like round one of the the free agency is over. All the big players are gone. Now you're kind of just waiting to see best player available, and Brad just he just gets the best player available. And I think we're going to see this where. DJ Reader, I agree with you, Booner. I don't think he's going to be walking out of Detroit with the deal. I think he is going to look at other options. But at the end of the day, a lot of those teams that needed defensive line and secondary needs and whatever they needed to address, they already did it. So if you look at the contenders around the NFL right now, that's where DJ Reader is going to go because he's third, 29, 30 years old. He's coming off a torn quad. So he's going to go want to go somewhere where he can succeed and not have to carry a whole defense, which I don't know if he's even capable of doing that regardless. But Detroit, they have the money. They have mutual interest. And I don't see the other teams like the Ravens. They just franchise tag Malcolm Adebuke. The 49ers, they already addressed their defensive line. The Chiefs have Chris Jones. I think the lines are the best fit for him. There's mutual interest. And Brad Holmes, he needs to address that defensive line. And if he does this, now he has so much more flexibility in the draft as well as far as defensive end, guard, tackle, wide receiver. He just gets one of those holes and one of those boxes that need checked out of the way. I think it's perfect. I don't see a way that it doesn't happen if Reader wants to go to Detroit. Fellas, interesting stat, too, when I was uh, doing some research, more research on DJ Reader, he had 34 
quarterback pressures last year. That's the same amount of pressures as Ali McNeil had this year. So you look at the numbers and he's not a guy that you're going to value strictly on the sacks or numbers. Like he's a guy that you measure his impact and right there are pressures. Uh, and especially Lions fans when it comes to pressures, like it's valuable. Uh, and now DJ reader, same amount of pressures as Aleem. So he's a, he's a playmaker and you still have our Eric Armstead out there as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about it. Offensive line is still a, you know, still a, it's a problem, but it, it's a fixable problem. And I think DJ Reader upgrades that. And if they add an Eric Armstead, yes, the Davenport signing looks a little better because now he does better. become a depth piece on top of who you already have. Um, a guy that can kind of move around a little bit on your defensive line. So, you know, we'll see. I don't know what kind of money Armstead would would demand, but he is injury prone. He, he's dealt with some injuries. And I know we mentioned, you mentioned it, Lucas. Reader's dealing with a torn quad. He's, he's recovering from that. So they can kind of patch together guys. That, I mean, despite all the criticism, they can put together a decent – it's not Daniil Hunter, but they can up, they've definitely upgraded this defense. By, and then you can by the way, too, guys saying uh, the cornerback position was upgraded and the defensive line position was upgraded. Yeah, by the way, yeah. too, DJ Reader, I'm pretty sure he's torn both of his quads in the last, like, two years. So, like, he he, he does get injured. Like, that, that is a thing. But if he stays healthy, that's – that's a massive piece. If he could stay healthy in playoff season, especially down the stretch in the playoffs, if they need, I'll tell you what, if the Detroit Lions need someone to come help for the recruiting tomorrow, I will call into my job sick. I'll do whatever I need to do. I will be in Allen Park tomorrow and I'll help the recruiting process. Whatever You'll show them around the city, Booner. I will show them. They, <laughs> they will see the full Booner path or DJ will see the full Booner path. I will guarantee that. And he will be signed by the end of the night tomorrow before before our show here and the thing right. quick before we we get yeah. off dj reader the the one thing that i love about dj reader the most if you go look back at the history of his best games a lot of them are in playoff games when he when mm. it's playoff time and there's a play that needs to be made in a big time game dj reader a lot of the time sam hubbard would come off the edge a lot but it's because dj reader's commanding a double team and he was shutting down run games for when when the Bengals went on their super bowl run if you go back and you watch some of that film the, if you didn't know who DJ Reader was going into those games, you sure as hell did leaving that game. So if he's in, in this locker room, when you go into the NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers, there is a liable veteran that you can put out there that's going to be able to produce for you, and you don't even have to think twice about it, especially when you go up against Christian McCaffrey. And now Saquon Barkley going to Philly, that's definitely a guy that you want to add to this room. Well, some, you know, speaking of some of the free agency uh, possibilities, we'll speak about someone who was signed, and that's Carlton Davis the third, who spoke to the media today. And it actually mentioned to him also about, you know, not being able to play a full season. I forgot who asked that. And I, I did, honestly, guys, I never even noticed that with Carlton Davis. He's never played a full season, um, which isn't like a, he's not, I wouldn't say he's injury prone to where he's missing seasons or he's missing a majority, but he's, he's about averaging about 12, 13 games a year. That's about his average. Um, so I, if you could really, if you could put a blemish on, on who they acquired, like there is, there is guys they Brad has brought in Davenport. I mean, if you get DJ reader two torn quads, but assuming he'll be healthy. And then you have Carlton Davis who has never played, well, I, I, mean, I, I don't think he's played 15 games, to be honest with you. I think it's all – his rest. His whole career is a little under 15. These guys just got to stay healthy. Like, that, I, I get Brad's approach to it. Like, you might be able to get a discount given that. But, man, that's where you start playing with fire. And guys that can't finish seasons, like the Lions expect to make long playoff runs, like, it can get tricky. So, I, I'm just curious. It's more of a question. I'm curious if, if that comes back to bite him in the ass. Yeah, but don't you look at, like, what they've done. Like, you get Emmanuel Mosley back from injury, right? You have Cam Sun. You know, you, you've just brought in two more free agents. You're probably going to draft a corner. That's five guys right there. You might like if you draft a corner, you feel like he can improve, especially if it's like a third round corner, a potential maybe for him to get some reps in throughout the year. And then at the end of the season, get more reps and kind of be in that that like rotation. And then maybe, the you know, Brian Branch and that spot like I, I feel like Brad's taking the approach to your point, Jeff. Like, yes. And, and we saw it last year with the corners. Like there were some injuries, injuries at time. Cam Sutton had to play through an injury at the, at, down the stretch. Like that hurt him. Like the amount of people and the, the, the elite wide receivers they went up against and no pass rush and him playing with turf toe or whatever he had. Like if, if you had someone else for him just to take one game off and try and just rest up his foot, you didn't have that though. Now, 
to the point to where, hey, if you go get Legereus Sneed, maybe you draft someone, you have Legereus Sneed a draft uh, a rookie and Cam Sun. Guess what? Brad's like, no, we're not going to do that. I'm going to go get some free agents and we're going to build depth, just like he's talked about. Is like depth in this room. Fill the holes. That's the the key to this offseason. Fill the holes. Pause. That's exactly what he's doing, and he's getting depth in that. I'm not as worried with it just because of that. If he plays 12 to 13 games, as long as he's playing down the stretch and in the playoffs, I'm I'm fine with it. It's just we have the depth now. I feel like, especially if you draft someone. Yeah. Well, let, let's get into the press covers. I'll show this clip here. And, and Carlton had some, he had some bars in the presser. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, uh, he he mentioned. I mean, he went from, you know, wants the the wants the Lions wants to help the Lions win a Super Bowl. He mentioned the Lakers and Bulls uh, dynasties. Uh, but he mentioned uh, extension talks. Here's a clip uh, from today's presser. We'll play this for the for the people. Here's here's Carlton Davis speaking to the media. Part of this, you want to sign something long term? Have you had any talks with the like, organization about that? Uh, yeah. On and off, um, but it's, it's still early. I just got here. Um, would love to sign here. Um, definitely want to get my feet wet first <laughs> and uh, get in the building before I start talking uh, extension. But this is a, a great organization, and it's going. Uh, it's, uh, it's like trending. It's trending upward. Uh, so I would love to be a part of a dynasty where we can go and win multiple championships over the next couple of years. Man, that's one of my goals, you know, is to create something that – uh, it's kind of like the Lakers, you know. It's kind of like uh, what all the dynasties did back in the day. Chicago Bulls said, "I think they have a nice young roster, great coaching staff, great culture here to do it." Honestly, um, even when we won it back in um, in Tampa, um, you know, you just kind of see the same similarities here, but uh, younger players, you know, here. So there's a lot of growth. I mean, fellas. I mean, you heard you heard the man, and this is something I mentioned to you, Booner, because uh, we were we were talking earlier about the the Carlton stuff. When is the last time a free agent joined the Lions? And he open his opening presser. He goes, "We're going to be a dynasty." Talking about the Detroit Lions, by the way, um, the laughing stock organization, like uh, in in prior times. That's why, like, it just it just it's like reaffir- you know reaffirmation confirmation whatever the hell word you want to use, that this is a different organization. Like the way Carlton was was uh, talking about the Lions, it's refreshing, man, to, to hear a free agent or a, a player that gets acquired through trade come in and be like, yeah, we're going to be like the Bulls. We're going to be like the Lakers. I'm going to help this team win a Super Bowl. I love the young core. They got a good team over here. Like I got a lot of respect for the coaching staff. Like this this is foreign. Uh, now it's becoming less foreign because now – Very you're gonna- less foreign. Now you're getting into this yeah, new organization. You're gonna winning games is gonna be something you're you're used to. But man, he he was dripped out with the ice on. CD I three. I like what he was three. saying. Yeah, he was dude, three words. Three words, real quick. The Booner Path, baby. <laughs> that man that <laughs> walked straight Dynasty. into Detroit. And I've been preaching this. I preached going to the NFC Championship game, and I've been preaching to go win two or three Super Bowls in the next season, in six years. That man just came in, and he looked me, he looked every single person in this chat, every single Detroit Lions fan in the eyes, straight in the eyes with those nice sunglasses he had on, and was like, this is going to be a di- – we're going for a dynasty. That's what I want. I want a dynasty. I want two Super Bowls, three, not four. I want five. Like, he wants it all, and and you don't see that. He came in there and did Le- – LeBron did to go to Miami and said, hey, we're going to go win multiple Super Bowls here. And the whole Booner – like – Carlton Davis confirmed a part of the Booner path. He is all in on that. I love every single part of it. I am all about that. Usually you see a player come in and say, yeah, I'm coming here for a Super Bowl. No, that man came in and said, like, I know what I, like, I've been to a Super Bowl and I've won one. I've seen dynasties. We've seen this. These guys have what it takes to become that in this league. I'm all in on Carlton Davis. I don't care how many games he plays in the season. I'm all in on that, man. It sounds like a leader to me as well. Sounds like a Brad Holmes guy to me as well. A Dan Campbell guy. All right. Sorry about the Booner Path rant, but that's Go all ahead, I got. Go oh, oh, no. That, that's just what I was going to say. It seems like he has that dog mentality and oh. kind of was going to bring that same energy that CJ had, but actually maybe like play, you know, in the second half and not wave to the locker room or wave the fans goodbye. But no, I like it. He seems like a Brad Holmes type guy. He's going to fit in. So I, 
I, I love the confidence coming out of him when you get a cornerback one like that. He's kind of going to instill that in the whole uh, cornerback room. So, you know, I love it. It You know. Hey, I mean, he was he was definitely gassing his gassing the lines up and himself because, I mean, Dynasty, I love it. But let's get one first. He's calling himself what? a lockdown corner, CB1. One of those. You guys are, you guys are some of those a, guys. And I love okay. the energy. I, I love the energy. Guys. But let's just – Bring it down. Let's get, let's get one first. Let's get one. I'm sure everyone I just, who says let's. If we let's... can get one Super Bowl, boys, I, Booner, I know you want your dynasty. But for life, I would need nothing more. A Lion Super Bowl is all I need. So dynasty talk is nice, but let's get one first. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Carlton, love the confidence. You guys know I love C.J. Gardner-Johnson. He's gone. Between him and Amik Robertson, who I think both combined are going to play 10 times more than C.J. Gardner-Johnson. They 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 replace that energy on the field, so I love it hearing that at the press do, conference. Do you want to know something else that that he said too? And we don't have a clip of it. I'm just going to throw it out there because you mentioned C.J. Garner Johnson. He said, "I'm not all about, I'm not about all the talk." A lot. He said, "I hate people who just talk, talk, talk to try and show that there's something." Guess what? I'm going to go show it on the field, and then we can talk. I was like, "Th- this well, is a Detroit. He is all about that, dude. He is." Yes, well, and I agree. Let's just get one first, please. I would love one Super Bowl. I'm to be fair, though, on that. he was speaking into the Booner path, Booner. That, that's all I thought about. <laughs> he, when, that when was, he opened he, that up, I was like, oh, my you. God, he's speaking Booner's <laughs> language. So You guys should watch me watching these press conferences live when something like that comes up. My like, And I know there's some people in that room who are thinking the Booner path when he says that. So like, <laughs> I'm sure like that was I wasn't the only one. Dan Campbell's got a box on his uh, on his checklist that it sees if they check off the Booner path or not. If they don't, they're getting sent back. They're getting the Daniil Hunter treatment. I wouldn't they be surprised when they sit down with him. Like, what are your thoughts on the Booner path? The Booner well, I'll what? Tell you what? I, guy's not this, it. This is what Booner looks like watching that press conference. A hundred percent. Oh, <laughs> just 100%. Yeah, right. I mean, he's it, that's he's good. He turns into Cabinda. It's like when Dan's oh, talking. Sure. That, that's exactly what it is. Uh, I do have I do have a clip here of uh, kind of what you were talking about, Booter, with uh, Carlton Davis, him talking about being a lockdown corner. Uh, Easy put this out. Shout out to him. He put this Shout on out. his Twitter, and I'm going to go ahead and steal it. Thanks, Easy, by the way. Uh, we're going to play this clip. This is him talking about his ability and what he can bring to the Lions. Here you go. Uh, you about to get a lockdown corner. You about to be able to have one side just like, you know, unavailable. Uh, that's what I do. You know, I'm here to take out the number one receiver on any team. I'm here to deny the ball. I'm here to take the ball away. You about to get a lot See, down. That, you about to be able to. That's a dog. I like it. I like it. Now, I like it. obviously, you know, like you said, he's not going to let, he's not going to talk. He's just let his play do the talking. Uh, but I do like Carlton Davis. We, we mentioned all the things we like about him. I don't think there's much more to add there. But I can say this, like to to hear him speak to the media, just to get to know Carlton Davis, the person, he's a dog. But you got to have that type of confidence to play corner in the NFL. Like you just do. And he has that swagger, like how he's talking. He's like, watch the tape. Like I think he said that at the press conference. He's just go watch the tape. Go watch any game. And, and then I forgot who said it, but they're like, which game? And he's like, and he couldn't think yeah, of one. But it, that, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> but the, well, it, it's because they it's because they put him on the spot it's because they put him on the yeah, spot that was one yeah. of those moments where it's like not second hand some second hand embarrassment it was just more so like someone just saved the man like someone <laughs> stepped in like yeah. this man just got walked into detroit and he like he he just got to detroit the first time like what someone what are we doing come on because he said pick the year he's like any year he's like well last year and he's like <laughs> yeah that's what i've been like that's what I'm saying. Like you could tell, he he was in there. He was he was trying to set a good precedent, set the level, the bar high. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I don't think. And here's the thing: why I'm, I'm not trying to be like, oh, Mister, like rain on the parade or anything like that. But Carlton Davis is a very good corner. He's not mm-hmm. going to be shutting down one side of the field. So I just I don't <laughs> want people getting. And there might, there might be games where he does, and he has a good game. But I don't think people should have that impression of Carlton Davis is a top tier like our secondary is completely fine now don't even worry about that side I will say though like you can see and I think it has a lot against going against Mike Evans every day in practice one-on-one you can see through like his career development he has gotten better and better every season but he's not shutting down a whole side of the field I love the energy hopefully he can I hope he proves me wrong I still think he's gonna be good but he's not Patrick Sertain Sauce Gardner out there 
<laughs> oh, so there's a couple of those guys in the NFL. Well, that's why I just don't – because some people are, like, going to be gassed up after this. Like, well, we just got a dog. Brad just got us a guy that's going to shut down half the field. It's like, again, I'm <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Yeah, just relax. Uh, hey, can we I'm, just I'm not have a, a football bounce off your helmet? Uh, can and, 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 can and, we agree, though, the confidence of him? Like, I'm, I'm, with, yeah, I'm with that. You know like, I love that. If there's one. a yeah. position in the NFL – if there's, like, a position in the NFL, like and, – and, Lucas, tell me if I'm wrong, and I've spoken with a lot of people. The hardest position probably is corner in the NFL, and I think you've told me that before. So, like, mm -hmm. if, if there's a position where I'm like, I want you to be the most confident on our football team, it would be the, the being our corner one. I want him to be, the like, as confident as ever. And him coming in there today saying what he did, I'm like, I'm all right with him being our, our CB1. I'm, I'm And then having Cam on the other side. Like, I, I, I love that. I'm with it. Yeah, and to your point, Booner, going into the draft, like the draft process, Brad's even spoken on how picky he is at the cornerback position. So if he's going and trading draft assets when he could find a corner that he likes in the draft, if he's spending it on a Carlton Davis, you know that that's a guy that's going to fit the scheme. And it's not just, a, oh, we need a corner, go get Carlton Davis. He's like, no, we're getting Carlton Davis. He's going to make an impact. Yeah. And you got to think that confidence is going to bleed over into his teammates. And that's probably going to help them out after, you know, the back stretch of the year where they were playing pretty rough. When you get, get some new faces in there and uh, kind of refresh the room, it might, might help his teammates out too. Mm -hmm. Super yeah, Bowl like winning corner. Yeah. I mean, it, it's an upgrade guys. That's how I look at it. You know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to, you know, expect him to, Although I like Boone said, and I, I mentioned earlier, confidence is everything with corner. Like that's I get that. Um, you can't take what he says too literal. Like now you expect him to shut down every number one receiver. But I'll tell you what, he's bigger than anybody you had. He's better than anybody you had, and he's gonna be out. He's gonna be out there making plays. So that's all that matters. I want to change it. Uh, Graham also talked to the media a little bit. We got some insight and in how the negotiations kind of came to fruition there. We looked at the the initial deal, and I think everyone was surprised in a good way. Like, dang, Graham Glasgow, one of the best guards, got that deal? I mean, you see these guards getting all types of bags, and you know, you got Landon Dickerson and Philly getting like quarterback money from ten years ago. Uh, but here's Graham. He's gonna. I'm gonna play this clip here. Him kind of giving some insight on how those negotiations went, and kind of what led to the deal. Um, I mean, like I talked to my agent. I think the night before, like the tampering period went about and I, I mean, there's always, you know, you can always see that there's some interest from other, from other teams. And uh, even if you're not talking about money um, and he told me like what they had kind of offered. And I said, I didn't even really want to like really wait and see use like other teams offers to maybe go back and try and get more money. I just kind of wanted to get it done and have it be done. And that was kind of how it worked. Um. I feel like they, they put a lot of trust in me, and I feel like they did good by me, and I want to come back and do as good as I can by them. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Like When I when I first saw this clip, I'm going to be honest, I was shocked that a player has that type of perspective because I've yeah. always felt like teams don't – teams rarely have a player's best interest, so players shouldn't have a team's best interest. That's how I've always felt. Like That's why when people like, how can this guy – how is this guy getting paid that money? Like – Get your money because uh, I don't think the NFL, you know, is going to give anyone any one of their uh, their advertisers or anybody that they're in business with discounts. So why are you giving organizations billionaires discounts? That's what I always believe. It's what I, I made the case for Amon Rob when we first mentioned it, what the amount would be like. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and expect a man to take a discount. But but the Lions, uh, uh, they're doing Things the right way for Graham to feel that way. I mean, for him to say they did right by me, so I want to do right by them. That just does not happen often in the NFL. It just doesn't. So for Graham to say it, I think it speaks volumes to the organization, it speaks volumes to ownership, general manager, uh, head coach, the culture, which is something that, you know, the Lions have been missing for quite some time. Guys, I think what he said, yeah, it's a steal of a deal. Graham's a great player. But like, don't that little nugget there, he said at the end, like that, that's not a common thing in the NFL, nor should it be. It's very rare that happens, but good for Graham, good for the Lions. Got a hell of a player back and a significant discount. Significant. Yeah. And, and real quick, I'll just be, I'll be short on this one. It, it's just a, a guy like, a guy like Graham Glasgow, what he did this last year for him to have any, like the interest he probably did around the league, especially at that guard position that you just saw take that next step up in the market. Graham, 
like he could have went and got paid a ton of money in my opinion. Not maybe like 17 million like Jonah, but he could have got way more than six and a half million or just under seven that he did in Detroit. And he didn't even think about, hey, I'm going to go out there and look and see how. He just said, no, whatever you guys want, I'm coming back. You guys gave me the one year, gave me the chance, I'm back. That's the leadership and what you want on this team. That's why he's getting that other year. And that's as well as why he's going to have another starting position. And he's going to take that next. And he's going to probably be a, a big time leader along with like Panay and Taylor and then. Um, and Frank on this on this offensive line. So I'm kudos to to Graham for doing that because a lot of guys in this in this league are just out for the money. And he sat mm-hmm. there and said, "I'll I'll take a lot, like a couple more, two millions, a lot to to miss out on." He probably could have said went and got four more a year. Like that's a lot of money, especially over over three years. I was going to say just what Jeff said. It kind of speaks to the front office, but it also speaks to like how close this team really is and how like the guys see this vision and uh, the Super Bowl and all that. And these guys are ready to lock in. Obviously, uh, it it's great for the team to get and Graham for uh, to get him at that low price. But it's it just speaks volumes to Dan, Brad and everything, how everything's changed. And it's, it's great to have a guy like Graham back, especially with that deal. Complete 180. Yeah. Oh, you're muted, Lucas. You're muted. No, Lucas. Ah! Anyway, we, need like a, we need to have like a punishment um, for it's that. Very, it's very boys need a punishment any, for that. Any sports that um, you, you see a guy like to just point that you see a guy that will sacrifice money to stay unless it's like a, I don't know, like a Dwayne Wade in Miami and he even left there, but just somewhere where he can retire with the team, a Kobe and right. something like that. But when you see, I mean, you even look at Jonah. He chased the money. So for Graham to stay back, to Jeff's point, Booner's points, all of them are well spoken. It shows you the Lions are doing it right. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, sit here and act like Graham would have got like twenty plus million. But there is, there is no denying he would have got more money elsewhere. No denying. Absolutely, yeah. that's the point we're making. He didn't choose the money. He chose the destination over the money. He chose being comfortable. He likes this team. He likes the culture. By the way, you're you're playing with the best offensive line in football, which that's what offensive linemen look at. Like, I get to play with Panay Sewell, Frank Ragnow, Taylor Decker. Like, it also, you know, hey, I just saw from the uh, Chris Long podcast, and they had they they were talking about Panay Sewell. I saw, like, a clip on, on I think it was YouTube Shorts, and they were looking at Panay Sewell, uh, just the play he had this season, and they were like, man, how fun would it be to play with this offensive line? I think that's how, like, guys like Graham feel. Like, it's like the fact that I get to play with this offense line, this offense, by the way, that values the run game and just being violent. Yeah, I, I think he loves it here. And again, like you brought up, Jonah Jackson, like he he chose the money, which I got, he was worth way more. Um, but yeah. Jonah, Jonah could have been like, no, I, I, I don't want to, you know, go take the money. I want to be here. But Jonah made a best decision for him. So it all makes sense. But yeah, shout out to the Lions, man. This is big time. The, the front office. The front office, too, like the fact that he came out and said, hey, they did right by me. I, I'm going to do right by that. Like th- th- that kind of whole that comment right there, I think, just shows mm-hmm. a lot because um, typically in Alliance history and in past regime, you never see that. Like that was never a thing. And and even in the NFL, you don't see that a lot. And and to have that here in Detroit right now is is I think that's like very, very valuable to have to be able to because there's going to be guys you're going to have to pay. Like we know that like Panay, like these guys are going to get paid. Um, but if you can get a couple guys every couple of years to take some pay cuts and not even want to go out into the market, like he didn't even go in. He literally just said, I'm good. Don't even like I know there's teams in don't even want to listen. I'm not even going to listen to it. Don't care. Just whatever they said, I'm good. Let's sign. I have a house here already. I'm good to go. Like that's crazy to me in, in, in yeah. today's world, in today's NFL. I want to go. I want to go through and kind of show you guys uh, what the Lions have done so far um, with ju- there's just their signings and and everything that's kind of happened here. Um, and we'll talk about some guys that are free agents because I, I do have a question for you fellas, and, and you guys can answer this. Um, chat, feel free to chime in as well. Shout out to our guy Will Rock. We got to meet him at the combine. He's a great dude. So sh- shout out to him. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet him. He tweeted this out, and this is uh, I I i was i've been asking for something like this i was gonna go ahead and make it but the fact that will did it thank you will uh makes things easier you get to go through and see kind of get like a full tracker and they're they're on websites as well but it's easier to look at how he kind of set it up uh here's so we got the re-signed players and you look at graham's three years for 20 uh craig reynolds tender brock wright tender jalen reeves maybin they got him back and then they let jerry jacobs join a core go zonovan knight they brought back dan skipper they re-signed Badgley, they resigned. Tracy Walker, they let go. You look at their acquisitions: Marcus Davenport, Carlton Davis, Amik Robinson, 
And then this is what I want to ask you guys. Expected to re-sign Josh Reynolds, DPJ, if Reynolds does not sign, it writes here, Anthony Pittman, Benito Jones, and Scott Daly. Uh, I'll – in the Romeo Cora one, I don't know about that one. Well, I, that one maybe, yeah, like he said, must be a cheap deal. We'll see. But I want to ask you guys, Josh Reynolds, what do you guys Dude. think is going on? You want me to be honest with you? I don't even think it's on the Lions' side. I bet you the Lions want to bring him back. I think it's just Josh Reynolds, and, and it's not bad on his end either. Like I don't want this to come off like it's on Josh. Like I, and I think he's doing the right thing. It's it's just he's had a good couple years, and I think it's like he can go see. Like look at the wide receiver market. Calvin Ridley just signed. Um, Mike Williams is available now. Outside of Mike Williams, Josh Reynolds is the best. Like if Mike Williams didn't get cut today, and Calvin signs he's the best wide receiver on the market all of a sudden and he can go take money. And, and I think he just wants to see what his market is. That's where I'm at with it. And that's going to be a question too. I want to bring up the doc, John Macaroon. Cause I want to know where he thinks the lines go with that. Cause the fact that they didn't get him signed yet is just shows. I think he's going to go look around and shop just to get some money to say, Hey, this is what I'm worth. I, I hope they bring him back, man. I, I love Josh Reynolds. Yeah. I agree with Booner. I think he's just testing the market. I think it's only a matter of time. If he does, he, he's done testing the market and he comes back for the Lions or he goes to another team. I think they're, it's not on the Lions' side. I feel like the Lions have priority reached out to him, obviously, and kind of laid some offers on the table. And then I think he's just out there testing the market. Yeah, I mean, he's probably just thinking, just getting time to himself and just thinking about what he really wants to do. I mean, Josh Reynolds, too, he's one of those guys where he doesn't have to sign right now either. If, let's say him and the Lions don't come up with a deal, I, I can't think of any NFL team that wouldn't want Josh Reynolds because he's not going to command a lot of money. He's not going to try to impose and be a wide receiver one. He knows his role. So if he doesn't sign today, if he doesn't sign next month, the month following, he's still going to find himself on the NFL roster if he chooses so. There's also the potential of, like, I know he just got married a couple of months ago or it might have been a year ago, whatever it was, he might be thinking about stepping away from the game. So even times like this, like it's he's up there in age, he could be thinking about retirement as well. So there's probably just personal things that he has going on. And he's like, yeah, I'll get back to you soon. I think the Lions are probably already new. Like they probably already are on a like a figure of what they're going to resign to. They've probably had talks before this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just up, got news. The, the Rankins deal with the Bengals is two years, 26 million. So... 13. That's so it's done. It, it's a done deal. Yeah. I, I, said, yeah. I, I said today that DJ reader will probably get anywhere from 10 to 15 million. That's probably the range. So if he's, if he signed for, what was that? 12, 13, what was it? Yeah. 13, 13, 26. Yeah. Million, I mean, you might get, yeah. It might be a similar higher, maybe a little higher number for DJ reader. I was thinking, I forget. I just, cause I think he can command a little bit more than Sheldon Rankins because Sheldon Rankins, like a, this would be his third, like third contract, and he's up in there in age because this would be readers as well. But readers coming off like a, a little bit better stretch. I'm thinking like three years, probably around like 42 million. If I had to guess, if I had to like ballpark it, like somewhere in that range. Yeah. Well, the thing on Josh Reynolds, fellas, and I, I wanted to ask, it's not, I guess, not necessarily whether they will, but should they? <clears throat> I mean. I'm curious what um, the market for Josh Reynolds, not the team's interested, but the number, because you guys all were spot on with what his intentions are. He's 29 years old. He's going to turn 30. He's still a productive player. He's still a guy, like Lucas said, anybody would want on their team right now. I mean, the Chiefs would phew, Chiefs would love him. I mean, you can go through any team. Any team would love Josh Reynolds. I know the Lions would like to bring him back, but a part of me wonders if Brad, and I, I don't know. Part it, a part of me is wondering if Brad will think to himself, "Yeah, Josh is good, but we got we got J Mo taking the steps forward. What if they just draft a wide receiver? There, it's a deep class this year, like very. You very don't well. think they could do both though? <laughs> know what I mean? Like you could still re-sign Josh, and because you could be like Josh, yeah. help us to develop for a little bit. I yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, they could, but like if they bring in like an Xavier Leggett, like I'm gonna be honest, no. I wouldn't be mad if he wasn't brought back. Maybe that's maybe people don't like me saying that. I, I, that's just me. I like you know I what? like Josh. He's solid. Can I be honest, boys? <laughs> Good. Like, and I'm not trying to be. I, I, it's not that I dislike Josh Reynolds. I don't want Josh Reynolds back. I think he has a great value on this team, but I just think the Lions. His his whole thing was reliability. The Lions with <laughs> um, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Sam Laporta have a lot of reliability. I think they need more playmakers, and Josh Reynolds can be that. But he can't do that on elite level. There's a this is a very deep wide receiver class that there are players in there where you can go and do that. And 
Dan talked about it after the NFC Championship game. They can't bring everybody back, unfortunately. There's going to be guys that they want back that they're going to have to move on from. And if you can upgrade a wide receiver at Josh Reynolds with this draft class, I don't think is that hard. I think that's something you can do. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to be happy that Josh leaves, but I'm definitely not going to be crying just because I know Brad's about to get his get in his bag at wide receiver. If they don't, if they don't sign Josh Reynolds and that is a deal, then I almost like just like the situation with um, Jonah Jackson leaving to where for me, like when Jonah Jackson leaves, if you don't sign a free agent guard outside of um, Graham, like if you don't attack that in the free agency, to me it's like okay, now you have to do that in the first or second round for with the guard position because you need a starting guard and then it's the same thing if josh reynolds doesn't come back guess what first second round you need to you need to address that to where that takes away a little bit from the defensive line that's why like this dj reader deal is that much more important and like maybe getting a jadavian Clowney or getting another edge rusher is that much more important because if you lose josh reynolds you need to get another in my opinion you need another weapon like you Mm-hmm. J-Mo can be your number two, but he hasn't like shown that like consistently. Like Josh Reynolds has done it more consistent than he has if we're just going by the numbers. So it's like, yeah, he could do that, but you're going to need someone, like you said, Lucas, to play make. So you're going to need to go out and get a, a playmaker in the se- first, second round. Like go get a, a, a Leggett or go get someone, a Roman Wills. Just go get another piece that can make plays. And then it's the same thing with the offensive line. So it almost like if you make that move, it's like we can't do every position in the first and second round. Like Brad's mm-hmm. going to have to make some sort of moves, either go sign an edge rusher or sign Josh Reynolds and then use the other one to go in the first or second. That That's just where I'm at with it. Cause you need starters. You're, like we're not in that build anymore. Like we're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, they got Josh off of free agency because he was released from the Titans, I believe. So that's where I'm at fellas. I'm glad you feel the same way Lucas about it. Uh, because I, I think the wide receiver class this year is so deep. You can go find somebody on a on a cheap contract that can come in and be depth for you that provides a different element to your offense. Like there's there's a lot of I mean I mentioned Xavier Leggett, but you could even go and try and Ricky get a guy Pierce like in the third round. Like you know, yeah, it's yeah, one you, slot you, guy that's a lot more athletic than Josh. Yep, Malachi Corley, you you brought him to yeah. our attention. I like him a lot. Uh, so Where we have yeah, Nathan that can make an impact instantly. That's where I'm at with it. It's like you need someone well, that can make a play now. You, you can't, yeah. like, have a guy to come in like Antoine Green. Obviously, that was late, but you need someone now that can hop in that role. I could argue I kind of agree receiver. with what Lucas said. Sorry. Uh, no, like, you're good. no, you're good. Playmaking. And, like, you kind of know where Josh Reynolds' ce- ceiling's at, and obviously you wouldn't pay him, like, a long-term deal. But if you can lock down a rookie wide receiver that has that playmaking aspect, that has multiple parts to his game, and then you kind of have him for a stretch of years under a favorable contract, like, I'm all for that. And I see some people in the chat. That's saying that he's signed, and I think that's a fake report. It's fake is fake, own. yes. Yeah, fake and I just constantly see it, so I'm just letting them know. Unless yeah, it just happened did. again or something. No, he's, no, I, I've got. Would have been all over that. that that's I've what I was kind of getting here. at, but yeah. Well, I, I, w- I could make the argument, guy, uh, guys, meaning Booner, because not that towards you, but kind of what you were saying, because I think that's a common question. Like, can you depend on a rookie? I would argue in today's NFL, you're, you're depending on rookies is more likely uh, rookie wide receivers. Because of the game, like be, look at Puka Nakua, he was a he was a late round pick. Well, I know there's not a lot of Puka. Nakua. I get he's a, but still the the fact that yeah. you could go get. I mean, at BYU, he wasn't this, you know, outstanding prospect. He walks in, breaks the. Uh, I mean, was the best receiver rookie by far. So mm-hmm. I it think does it go both happen. ways. It does go both ways because there are some guys. The kid, what's his name out of T or out of TCU? I'm I'm drawing a blank. That was the first it, round pick. In the charge. Yeah, yeah, but like that's that's even another point. It's like you could even go first round and you get a guy and it, it doesn't work out. It's just yeah. it, it's a hit or miss. I do trust Brad with that case. Like he he's done a good job of finding weapons that kind of fit right. And then at the same mm-hmm. time, it's like a Ben Johnson, like a lot of receivers are going to benefit coming into that offense. That's already kind of top five. So it's going to be easier. Like Quentin Johnson going in there. They, they, they had a lot of struggles that both sides of the ball there in in Los Angeles. So it was tough for him, but it's a hit or miss. Like if you're, if you're leaving a Josh Reynolds, who's giving you six, 700 yards a year, every year, you you do need to find a replacement, but it's going to, there's going to be a chance. Like there's a chance it doesn't work out. I need you. I need you just for my, my blood pressure right now. I need you to fall, make like just double down and make sure that this is not true. Not Please. true. No, okay. it, it's a report. He is not. No, Will Harris is not back. Same with Charles right. Harris. I wanted Charles Harris out. They did not. I think they could have. I think they were restricted, and I, I think they let him go. I could be wrong. 
we, well, we can, we can ask that question. Uh, I'll, I'll, bring in, I'll bring in somebody that can help us answer those questions. Uh, our good friend, because it is Wednesday, and we got Wednesdays with John Macroon joining the program. Please welcome in Go. the one, the only, the Mr. Doc. John Macaroon, the Doc. The doc. John, the doc, baby. You had, a busy, you had a busy day. Real quick, by the way, before we get into all of it, you can find John. He's the host of the Detroit Sports Podcast, publisher for all Lions. They're crushing it right now. John, you were at the, the press conference today. Before we get into all that, can you just – Please, for our blood pressure, Will, Will Harris did not resign, correct? Yeah, not yet. Oh, no, okay. no, don't say that. Come back. No, you know, uh, well, look, <laughs> I, they do like him, versatile, but man, opposing quarterbacks loved when he was on the field. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, John, I'll, I'll start with this. Uh, Carl, Carlton Davis kind of spoke to the to the media, him and Graham. When you when you when you got to see Carlton and, and kind of his presence, the confidence, the swagger, obviously playing cornerback, you need to play with that type of co- have that type of confidence. I, I made this point earlier, John. Like it's it's crazy to think a player gets acquired by the Detroit Lions and he walks in. And some of the first comments he's making are about a dynasty, Lakers, Bulls, the winning a Super Bowl with the Detroit Lions, praising the organization. Like John, help me kind of comprehend how this is a, a, a new org. And you got Graham who had his comments about doing him right. W- what is happening here, John? Why are the Lions? They're, they're a good organization. And I know they've shown that, but it's solidified with players like Carlton Davis, who never had any connection with any Lions coaches, walks right in and compliments them. And he's, and he's, and he's looking at this team like they're a legitimate Super Bowl contender, John. Absolutely. Before we get into all the hardcore football talk, thanks for having me. Boys, Cheers. League year. New league year. And you guys know, right? This is the year of the fucking Lions. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Super Bowl season, baby. This is the year of the Lions. New league year, 2024. Man, you know what? You know, seeing Cat Williams on Shay Shay show and now seeing the swagger. (laughs) That Carlton Davis had, you know, I'm an impressionable, uh, an impressionable young man. I need one of those blingy <laughs> Dio suit and I'm gonna start rocking sunglasses on all these interviews. Man, when he walked in, it was smooth sailing. And look, everyone understands these guys get prepped. That's what they were doing for the 45 minutes, making us wait. Was getting all the talk that they, uh, getting all the talking points that he needed to say, which was one, which everybody loved. He says he's going to be a lockdown corner. So he put his nuts on the table day one. I love it. And he said, look, I'm I'm from a familiar situation. I won Super Bowls in the past. Now I'm coming here to Detroit. And when you look at it, I think Carlton Davis should have an extra amount of respect from Lions fans. You know why? Brad Holmes traded for him. They looked at his tape, the two games he played against Detroit, the games that he played in the past couple years, and they said, that's our guy. And look, cheers to the fact that they've upgraded a shitty cornerback's room and at least gotten a little bit better. And in a tough position, I love the swagger. I love somebody that comes in and just says, my job needs to be to shut down half the field. And one of the reporters, and you all know who it was, was like, why do you believe that you are a shutdown corner? And you know what? Smooth as sailing. You know what he said? Turn on the fucking tape and let's go. Watch what you got to see. And that's let's all he needed go. to say. That's let's all he go. needed to say was turn on the tape and you'll figure out why the man, that's why Jamar Chase said that man going up against Carlton Davis was a nightmare and was was very tough. Man, uh, Doc, I, I should have, I didn't, I didn't bring a beer. I forgot a beer this week. Hey, I, I will. I will make sure next Wednesday I will I will have one. There, there's I have some sitting upstairs. I, I will make sure I have one. Um, I, w- I want to ask you this though because Graham spoke to the media as well to you guys today. Um, and he kind of took a, a. It sounded like at least to me the oh, the way I took it, it sounded like he didn't even care what other offers he had. He he took a team friendly deal. He probably could have went and got more, and he kind of went out there and took that deal. Um, on the other side as well though, there's that another kind of guard opening there, two parter. Real quick, the, the the impact that Graham Glasgow will have on this team going into this season, and also, do you like where do you see the Detroit Lions going to get another guard here? Because uh, is it someone already in the building? Is it the draft, free agency? Like, where do you see um, them? Because there is a spot that's just sitting there open on a probably the second best or first best offensive line in the NFL right now. Yeah, absolutely, Graham Glasgow, man, he's fun as well, lighthearted, somebody that you know with the media is somebody that has kind of gratiated himself. People love to talk to him. And you look at a player like that, and he said, look, 
I signed a prove a deal to come back to Detroit in 2023, and he proved it. And the Lions came to him with an offer that he probably was like, yeah, that's security. That's a good amount of money guaranteed. And he had an opportunity, and he said, he openly said, when his agents started to talk to him the day before, Graham just said, I want to stay in Detroit. So if the offer's there, sign it. He could have, you know, there was interest clearly from other teams, and he didn't take advantage of an opportunity to leverage the Lions for more money. He got the three years, $20 million, and you recognize he wanted a raise, and the Lions did right by him because of the fact that, hey, he, he had to fight for his job, and he earned it, and he performed well. Now he's going to sit back and, and definitely grind, and, and he's got a, got some work to do because, yeah, Jonah Jackson, man, three years, $51 million, secured the bag. And I just think that price range probably priced him out in Detroit. But you look at the Rams, they get a nice, solid, gritty offensive lineman. And for the Lions, they got a couple options. They can go with Coyote Awosika, or they have a young – uh, someone with an infectious personality, someone that actually I enjoy talking to on the side, off the record, and Col uh, Colby Sorsdahl. I think that's the the first option right there to potentially replace uh, um, Jonah Jackson. And I think Colby, his first year, got a chance to get some action, go through the struggles, but now is going to have to fight for an opportunity because as well, I think they also, the Lions will look in the draft for potentially more upgrades. But the Lions got an opportunity now. They have to obviously make sure that offensive line performs at a high level. And keeping Graham Glasgow is a good start. Yeah, Johnny, keeping him free agency as it stands right now, especially with the secondary. How much do you think this Lions defense has improved already from the 2023 year? How much do you think it's improved so far? Yeah, that's a great question. You look at the uh, Detroit Lions, they had to upgrade the defense. And so they targeted cornerback. And I know hopefully you guys ask about my overall thoughts about the safe strategy that Brad Holmes has been using. But you recognize, look, the, the cornerback's room was atrocious. And you start by moving on from Jerry Jacobs. Thanks for all the time. And they get they go out and get a Raiders cornerback in Amik Robertson, and they trade for a Tampa Bay, you know, really solid veteran that really has the potential to be a solid one, number two, you know, in that mix. But really what... Uh, Davis does well is he is a plays very well man to man. So if you just mm -hmm. get better production in the secondary, you've improved that defense. Now, James Houston's back. Clearly, I know there was a little bit of angst online about his deal. And of course, he was going to come back. You expect development. Look, guys, uh, Aiden Hutchinson is going to improve. You expect Aleem McNeil to continue to fight for getting his big deal. You know that he's a solid player and James Houston emerging. You shed some dead weight, like you guys said, potentially in Charles Harris and guys that are not going to contribute. And I think you guys also, I know, have probably or will talk about in the future. Jack Campbell is going to get better. I do believe Derek Barnes is going to get better. And so I think this defense has drastically improved. But is it to the point where it's championship level? I don't think so. I think you need that stout individual that is going to no doubt about it I wish it could have been Daniil Hunter or somebody that you know could get 15 sacks opposite of Aiden Hutchinson, but maybe that, that person's out there. But in the end, there's a name you're hearing that's going to be flying in town, and um, you, you maybe get DJ Reader, which will drastically potentially upgrade the, uh, the run defense where you got a guy that's known to be stout against the run. So if you can just find in the draft the sack artist, man, this defense has a chance to make a lot of noise. You yeah, know, John, thanks for joining us. And uh, after seeing some of the contracts handed out in free agency, was there any guys that you were like mad that the Lions didn't pursue or you look at their contract and say, wow, like, why didn't the Lions offer that? Yeah, it's the, the million dollar question. What's my thoughts on the free agency strategy? Look, uh -oh. I get it. I get it where the fans are a little bit unsettled that they didn't get to unwrap sexy toys. They didn't get to pop the bottle because Brad Holmes is going really safe and guys that have come off of injury have kind of more along the lines of prove it deals. But look, at this point in time, clearly you got to trust Brad Holmes. When they turn on the tape and do the evaluation in the meeting rooms with the coaching staff and Brad Holmes, you recognize that, hey, these players are going to fight and battle. They're going to be individuals that are going to come in and want to keep this train rolling. Everybody knows the objective. The mission is clear that you don't get to celebrate until you win the ring. 
And that's what everybody in town wants is to win the Super Bowl. Now, could they have done it and made everybody a little bit more, you know, you know, this is the part that I understand as well. Football is entertainment. What do you call it? Free agency frenzy. Right out of the gate, you hear deals at 12 noon. And all of us here in Detroit are waiting. We're scrolling. You know, Booner had to turn off the porn a little bit, get back to Twitter. And he's, like, <laughs> you know, he's like, man, I wasted four hours of scrolling online and nothing happened. And finally, they make the moves. And it's Marcus Davenport who – only had two sacks, <laughs> and the first deal for the Lions is like, what the hell? But in the end, you got to trust Brad Holmes and recognize that not not every deal has to be flashy. Would I have liked them to have added to D- Daniil Hunter for that deal? Yeah. Would I have liked the talent from Miami? Absolutely. You cannot discount talented players. I'm definitely a fan of the moves that Houston and Philly made, but Detroit – Started off ahead of them. And if Brad Holmes crushes it in the draft, it's just clear, guys. It's not going to be free agency frenzy for the Lions. He's not just going to willy-nilly go out there and sign guys to big, exorbitant contracts. Brad Holmes is looking to not only win in 2024, but also not saddle the team with contracts that are going to make it hard to sign the guys, to sign their own guys. So I would have loved Daniel Hunter. I would have loved... You know, the Miami, the big star from Miami. You know, that, yeah. Yes, absolutely. I would have loved a big one. I would have loved luxurious Sneed. But at the same time, when you look at what's being brought in, Brad Holmes always deserves kudos because you recognize, okay, if these are the guys that you're targeting, you expect that they're going to produce at a decent level, at least not upset the apple cart. Maybe the move that, you know, can be debated is maybe, you know, for $11 million, is C.D. Deuce worth it? You know, probably not. But man, if Philly thought his swagger was was uh, missed, I wonder what that's going to mean for the Lions' defense because he did bring a swagger to that defense. And it, there is something to say that hey, you lost Jonah Jackson, you lost C.D. Deuce. Those are those are talented individuals that have left Detroit. John, uh, I want to ask you this before we we get you out of here. The Josh Reynolds stuff, we kind of talked about it a little bit. Uh, people assume that he's going to resign with the Lions. Could I could I make a case that? you know, at least for the Lions interest with this deep wide receiver class. I wouldn't be opposed, John. And we kind of had this discussion of the Lions potentially moving on from Josh Reynolds and drafting a wide receiver for cheaper. What are your thoughts on Josh Reynolds returning? Is it more than likely? Why Why hasn't he re-signed? Can you give some kind of input on that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you ask around the, the sources and things like that. Look, and, and based on what Josh Reynolds told us, look, this is a guy – that's going to look, you know, maybe not do what Graham Glasgow did. He's going to listen to all the offers that are out there. And free agency just started. And you look at it, and this is a player that not only wants to secure the bag, no doubt about it, and as well he should. But at the same time, he's a player that's very confident in his skills, and he recognizes in Detroit he's going to be target three or four no matter what. Just look at the offense. J-Mo's emerging. you got a running back that's going to need his touches. St. Brown, you got a tight end in Sam Laporta. Reynolds was asked to do a lot of things in that offense in terms of, you know, lining up all over the place. He told me and he told reporters earlier in the year, Wednesdays were just a nightmare because he had to just absorb so much of the installs. And you recognize that when a player starts getting the ball a little bit more, gets trusted, they light up because he said it kind of felt good for once to kind of, see the plays that are going to be called and have my name be a primary option instead of the third or fourth option. So if there's a team out there that he knows potentially is going to be a number two, let's say, for example, if T Higgins moves on from the Bengals and and they come calling and say, hey, you're the guy opposite of Chase, no matter what, you're getting number two targets. That's also something outside of money that could force and, and, and allow Josh Reynolds to leave. But look, here's the case for him to stay in that, there's a tight bond with with Jared Goff. They're close. Um, they've flown on private jets together. They're they're in, they're simpatico. And yeah, the lasting memory for fans is him dropping balls. But throughout the year, he was reliable. So this is a situation where it's a true negotiation, and he's probably going to want some assurances about his role and the dollars that he's going to be part of that they're going to be offered him. And and if another team offers maybe that extra year, then he could depart. So it's no guarantee. 
And uh, I, uh, for me, I get a kick out of scrolling online for the couple reporters that today that fell for the fake uh, uh, Reynolds report. He has not signed yet. And um, make sure that you guys trust your sources and make sure that you don't promote fake accounts. It's funny for guys like me to see that. But at the same token, Josh Reynolds, I think he returns because of what he does. He's a reliable individual. And the relationship you have with the quarterback, when you see just how close he is with Jared Goff, I think that if the numbers match up, then he'll come back to Detroit. John, can we can we keep you for a little bit? You busy? I don't want to I'm not busy it. at all, boys. All got right. one more to go. I'll take one more to go. go. <laughs> hey, by the way, by the way, put some respect in that reporter's name. That's John, uh, I think his name was uh, John Collum. I think or Jeffrey Collum. What do you guys think about that that deal? It it said one year six million. Would you guys have taken that deal with Josh Reynolds? <laughs> Are Absolutely. You shit me? Yeah, yeah of course. I would have taken that one for sure. It's less um, than John, dabbing for Boone. Yeah, I would have taken that for yeah, sure. No, I mean, it's, it's coming off a of two-year six million, so it, it, it's a little bit of a pay increase. But I, I would have done it. Um, John, I want to ask you this too, kind of from I don't know, like if you heard anything or what's kind of going on being back in the building today. Um, where do you kind of see the next move with Brad Holmes? And I know the free agency it slowed down. There was no moves today. Uh, nothing going on. And I know we already spoke about a couple different positions. Now, is there something that you're like you feel like he's going to do this next? It's like the number one priority obviously i think corners not the number one priority anymore but what do you what do you think he does next um going forward yeah blake okay no doubt number two started all right you got number two he's number two for me all right, Let's go. All right. you're hearing it well i think clearly the defensive line i think dj reader i think has a strong chance now here's the problem coming off of that quad injury now who have two significant injuries i think that he comes in Going to get the medicals, going to get find out. They're going to find out, okay, can this guy be somebody? You saw now that uh, I thought somebody that the Lions wouldn't be interested in his rankings. He now goes to the Bengals, potentially took took his job. And you realize, okay, DJ Reader, look, I know there people are going to be upset because of the injury situation, but he was an integral part of the Bengals. I think that's fine. That's kind of in line with what Brad Holmes is looking for. You still need... In my opinion, you need a dog on the defensive line. And I think DJ <laughs> Reader fills that role. So uh, then I, I think you can start maybe looking at the offense a little bit, fill some more depth, and then you can start hitting the draft. And so if you get four, you know, you know, four or five players in free agency, you start looking at your own and uh, you go from there. But I think the defensive line, you got to, I think that uh, not getting Daniil Hunter, not getting Wilkins um, kind of is a, is, is a situation. Now, w- what I like is drama. So if it doesn't work out with DJ Reader, could you imagine? I don't know if you guys know the story. Uh, Armstead from the 49ers called out yeah. Dan Skipper, and he said, yeah. bro, what do you guys love this Skipper for? I see his videos. He was dropping racial bombs all in my face when we were playing, <laughs> oh, and it kind of didn't get talked about, and nobody was going to – I mean, I thought for a second. I was going. I was like, hey, here's the life of a reporter. You, you, you say to yourself, there's this seven-foot-one man that could literally <laughs> knee, knee me in the face – if I ask him this question, so I debated it. I'm like, I, this is a story I could write. You know, I'm like, you know, you, you go in your mind and you're like, okay, how am I going to phrase this question so I don't get my little ass kicked? And there's no way to ask it. There's no way. How do you go? How would John Macaroon go up to Dan Skipper and be like, look, you know, did you drop some end bombs on Armstead? Were you kind of, <laughs> were you kind of taunting the man? And so I was like, you know what? I use discretion. I didn't get my ass kicked. I didn't ask. But now if they if they add if they add Armstead, I'd be great because then he's gonna battle Skipper who just signed. And then somebody probably will ask that question, like, yo, what's up with you and Skipper? Are you guys gonna mend fences and uh figure it out? But you know, in terms of what the Lions are doing, I- I'm enjoying it. It's not as frenetic this week as I thought it would be. There's a lot of rumors, but for the Detroit Lions and what they got going on. Man, it's a it's a it's a good time to kind of get into the new season with the free agency period and the draft. But my goodness, man, uh, defensive line they got to target it. They need more sacks. They need more pressure for sure. That comment, yeah, Doc. Comment. I know there's a lot of time left in the off season through the draft and free agency. But if you had to pick a player who's going to benefit most from all the acquisitions that have been made and still to be made that was on the roster last year, who do you think it's going to be? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think. 
you know, the acquisitions are going to benefit because if the defensive line gets upgraded, you realize, okay, that goes hand in hand. You know, if you upgrade the pass rush, no doubt about it, I think that'll definitely help things. But, you know, you look at it early on, you see those moves, uh, who, who benefits. I think that, you know, Cam Sutton, I think, is probably really happy that yeah. the pressure probably is taken off of him. Man, he's getting dogged because he's not a number one. And mm-hmm. you recognize that individual is a veteran, but probably better suited to take on the number twos. And so when you have a Davis and, and he's coming in saying, I'm the dog, I'm the number one, and you have a competition with Mosley, who maybe will get a spell if he gets healthy, then you have an opportunity for Cam Sutton maybe to kind of rebound and show why they the Lions invested in him. He's a good player. He's not elite. He's not shut down. But I think he's good enough, and he's wily. He's, he's, he's resilient where, you know, you saw him give up plays, but he always comes back and fights. And so I think the additions of cornerbacks definitely helps out Cam Sutton in my mind. Yeah, and John, I think there's still obviously a few moves to be made in free agency, but I'm just curious to hear what you think the Lions, what angle the Lions will take with their first round pick. We all kind of talked about it yesterday. I think that maybe with all these moves, I know, and I know like obviously there's still some to come, but we were kind of leaning that they take offensive line with that first round pick. I'm kind of curious to see where you're at. Oh, yeah, it's wide open, man. It's great. The, looking at the draft and seeing what they could do, it kind of puts more offensive line in play, you know, in regards to obviously losing. Uh, losing Jonah Jackson, but at the same token, I think Brad Holmes has his plan and, and his board will be, you know, filled at that spot at number 29 with a lot of good players and whoever's there. I think that they'll have the list of names that are going to fit and it could be offense. You know, I've definitely, you know, weighed in and said, Hey, Keon Coleman, I'd love to make this offense super at the same time. You never know weird things could happen in the draft. Maybe the guy that Brad Holmes says I need to have, he'll go and get them. Maybe they'll do some things and get a Darius Robinson, uh, get an elite pass rusher. Maybe they'll go up and, and, and go and find somebody that they believe is going to be impactful right away. But at 29, home. Home. yeah, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of options for what Brad Holmes can do. But if they stay there, I think there's going to be an impactful player at that spot that the Lions are going to uh, take care of. And, and look, man, I think, If you recognize, okay, you added a couple players in free agency that Phil needs in depth, and you hit that draft hard. The draft this year really is the Super Bowl because that's what that's what Brad Holmes is emphasizing. And I did real fast. Easy's Easy's in the house checking in. No, I don't think Sheila Hemp is forcing Brad Holmes to be cheap in any way, shape, or form. I truly believe that Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, when they say this is how we build. That we, we're not going to go out there and bring superstars that are entitled. And, and obviously, it comes right from Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell f- scratched and clawed. And I love that attitude. That's kind of how I was back in the day. I'm a little different now, and I can look back. You know, I'm, I just turned 45. Cheers to me. My birthday was Monday. Cheers. Oh, let's go. Oh, Happy birthday. Oh, man. Yeah. Happy birthday. And, and, and I look at it, you know, if, if I'm taking a real critical look at myself, I could write more. I could do more podcasts. I could do a daily podcast, but I'm comfortable. You know, I established a couple of things in my life where I've made my life a little bit easier in the last five years. So I want to drink more, work less. And yeah. they don't want guys like that. When you get, listen, <laughs> psychology, simple psychology will tell you, if you give a man $20 million, is he going to spend that extra 15 minutes in the gym? Or is he going to drop the beats and go for a walk with his lady friend and buy a watch? So in my mind, I respect that. But at the same token, you don't need a locker room uh, littered with those kind of guys. But you could use a free agent or two that you know, like a Daniil Hunter, 25 million, he's going to get you probably 15 sacks the next two years. And that's, damn, that's going to be reliable. So in, in my mind, hey, we all follow Dan Campbell's lead. And if he wants the grit, we can we can support that here in Detroit. They want a bunch of guys that can drink beers and and be hard working and, and not be divas and wear their fur coats. No no problem by me. And, and John, we're gonna start doing uh, something here on I'll the show. Where we kind of kind of award members uh, or reward members where we we allow them to ask a question. We got this question here. And this will be the last one, and it's an interesting question. Who's your favorite player in this year's draft, John? <clears throat> Ooh. Man, a lot of good players, man. For Detroit, you got to love the local guy. Uh, Yeah, you got to love Robinson. I think that 
you know, somebody that says I grew up loving the Lions and can ball out, played at a at a, at a school that kind of was not known for success and kind of made them put them on the map. So I, I look at you know a lot of a lot of players. If if, if dream scenario, you know, if you get the the young developmental quarter uh, cornerback in Mitchell, man, that would be spectacular. Somebody that can come in and learn from some of these guys as well. And uh, I just love the, the guys on defense, I think would be great. And then uh, I think the Jackson Powers, I think when, when yes. if, he, if, if he gets called to Detroit, everybody is going to be happy and satisfied. I think he's, he's a guy, he's a dog and everybody loves and respects him. And then real fast, all of you guys not liking Coors Light, it's filling, it's refreshing. It's not <laughs> controversial. Listen, and guys also too, I'm tr- I, do, I don't just have, Coors Light in the fridge. I got IPAs. I got uh, whiskeys. I got it all. But I'm trying. If I, I'm I'm yep. a lightweight. If I hit the IPAs with the boys, I'm gonna be cussing and slurring. I'll be <laughs> I'll be hammered. I'm I'm being professional in my drinking on the show. But if you want mm-hmm. me to drink uh, bells and all that shit, I have all that. But uh, <laughs> very ver- very versatile show. drinker. Very versatile, versatile drinker. Yeah. Coors for the versatile. boys. That's what I like. Yep, and not, and not Will Harris versatile either. No, Jameer no. Gibbs, type. <laughs> Jameer yeah. Gibbs. That's your comp, yeah. John. Jameer Gibbs. Well, John, we appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time. That's a lot of fun always having you on. We'll have John on every Wednesday, 845 Wednesdays with John Macro to help us break down for agency. John, thank you. He's the publisher for all lines, of course. You can check them out. Link will be in the description. And he's the host of the Detroit Sports Podcast. Uh, there'll be Coors Light on there as well and other drinks that he's <laughs> indulging in. John. We'll catch you next Wednesday. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate yep. you, John. Cheers to the Lions and Brad Holmes. Cheers. It's going to be a good year, boys. Thanks for having me. No Shout problem. John. There you go. Uh, Mr. John McAroon, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, who just continues to do great work. I mean, hey, he came in the show. He's consistent. Came in last show, last week with a Coors Light. Came in this week with a Coors Light. Two you appreciate them, two. a man who's consistent. Two. Two. three next week. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just keep that in yeah. One two. Of, yeah. My draft I time, he's just got a fucking, he's got a 12 rack. <laughs> One of these days he's gonna show up with Dan Campbell in the course light. And I'm gonna oh my gosh, here we go, boys. Uh, I, I wanted to quickly here uh give a shout out to some people who became crunch members. Big Dan Davis became one earlier in the show. Big Dan shout Davis, out, man. we appreciate you, brother. Thank shout you. He's, he's now a crunch member. Penny Wise is also a crunch shout member. Out. And yeah, there are different perks included, guys. Like I said, we'll, when we have guests on, we're going to try and implement the chat. And again, the questions that come from the chat will be coming from crunch members only. Um, so those people will be getting that benefit. It's exciting. Get you guys involved as well. And it's fun for John. Uh, as you can see there, <laughs> he said <laughs> that he was double cores light up on a Wednesday. Appreciate that. Uh, John was I, in the building today too, which is like, you have someone in the mm-hmm. building day one back basically at Allen Park is that was awesome. That was sweet. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. So we had some, we, we had some uh, breaking news earlier. It's, it's not really anymore, but Booner put this out and we talked about Khalil Mack last week or uh, earlier this week. And we kind of mentioned them before about the possibility the Chargers are in cap hell. What are they going to do? Well, we have the answer. They released Mike Williams who, you know, and, and we'll see what kind of market he has. I mean, who cares? Uh, the Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, though, that was where the Lions fans were interested in because they need a defensive end. And, both options are viable. I think people would prefer Cleo Mack just because of the health factor. I mean, Joey Bolzer's missed like 20 games the last two years, so there's also that. Cleo Mack restructured, fellas. Mm-hmm. And as you could see, Booner put this out breaking for all the Detroit Lions fans that wanted Cleo Mack in Detroit. He's officially staying with the Los Angeles Chargers this season. And uh, he restructured <laughs> his deal. I'm not going to lie to you. In my head, I convinced myself that we were going to get DJ Reader, and I'm like, there's a chance they get Khalil Mack too. Like, now we're getting a – hey, you're nasty. piecing together a pretty good defensive line. They figured out a way to, to get under the cap and uh, just a little bit, and that was by cutting Mike Williams, fellas. So who knows? I, I don't know what the future holds for Joey Bosa, but – I mean, they're Khalil cutting Mack's him over Keenan. Ball. I can tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I Keenan's would hope. The I mean, especially stayed. with Harbaugh there. I, I'm pretty sure it came out and said Keenan's the safest one out of all of them. Yeah, he should be. Dude's a Hall of Famer. What are you but, guys preferring, Mac over Bosa? Obviously, Bo- Max yeah. obviously a few years older than him, and then maybe his contract doesn't demand as much. But I mean, they're both dogs. So I think the Mac thing, though, it's like like Joey Bosa. Just I, I think he played like he missed like 20 games the last yeah, couple seasons. Tough. or 
Like it was like a crazy stat. So like at least with Khalil Mack, like both of them you were taking like a twenty million dollar cap hit, like or maybe like twenty five it was mm-hmm. or something like that. After everything kind of sorts itself out, so I would have rather had Khalil Mack. I, am I like and I, I see Chef in there said no to Bosa. Like I don't know where you guys are at with the Bosa thing. Like if he comes in on a one, like you only get him for one year. I don't know where how long his contract is. I guess we have to dive deeper into that because I was all in on the Cleo Mack thing. I didn't even really look at the Joey Bosa contract. I didn't even pay attention to it. I was just like, I would rather go Khalil Mack, 17 sacks, he bring one more year on his contract. Like I was all in on that. So I'm interested in the Joey Bosa. Like if he's healthy, that's like if you're a one year deal and you have the cap space, why wouldn't like why would you really really in my opinion say no if if he can stay healthy? That's the only thing to me I would say no is the health and you take a big cap hit. But outside of that, it's like, hey, if he's healthy for the playoffs and down the stretch for you, like that's a him and Aiden Hutchinson, that's a scary duo. And and like I know the health is like that's a big that's a big if. Like that's a big if for a guy that's missed 20 games the last two years. But if he's not, if he's not like you're, dude, you have a elite pass rush. And I will say Joey with Bosa, Bosa I, yeah. I I would say I want to see what they do with Reader first. I, if if they were if they were to like if the Chargers were to release Bosa and then the Lions go out and get him, because even if it's a one year deal, it's going to be somewhere probably around twenty. If I I would imagine so. So if that takes you out of the Reader, then I would be that would upset me a lot. But at the end of the day. To your point, Booner, if you have Joey Bosa out there and he's healthy for 12 games out of the year, that defense is going to be looking a lot different than it has the last couple of years. Because when Joey Bosa is healthy, he's a top 10 defensive end in this league and he's athletic. He's one of those guys where there's a mobile quarterback. He's able to track him down. He's able to keep him inside the pocket. And he's done it for years when he's healthy. And we know if a player has injury concern, Brad loves that. Brad loves rolling the dice on injury concern players because they know they have to prove it somewhere. And if you're really the Lions and you're walking out of free agency with only Marcus Davenport and you say, yeah, we could have had Joey Bosa, are you really going to be complaining? Like, I, I I don't think there's going to be a lot of Lions fans that would complain after the Brad Holmes signed Joey Bosa. I know people are like, no, the injuries. But realistically, if the Lions signed Joey Bosa, I think a lot of people would be happy because that's a win now move. What about you, Mike? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, yeah, I, as of now, Bosa is under contract for $15 million, uh base salary this year and then $17 million next year. I mean, I would have still preferred a guy like Khalil Mack, but like Lucas said, when you get a dog like Joey Bosa, even though he has missed some games, and that's primarily the main concern is him missing games because, you know, when he's out there, he can perform. But uh, I would have still rather had Mack, but I wouldn't have be mad by any means if they address it by, uh, you know, bringing in Bosa. Yeah, the Bosa stuff's interesting. I mean, the last two years, he's played in a total of 14 games. It's tough. So 14 games the last two years. But this year he had six and a half sacks in nine games. Um, a couple couple games with two sacks. And then you look mm-hmm. at his career prior to two years ago. He There were some seasons where he missed, but he also has, has three seasons in which he's played 16 games. So it, it's, it seems like lately it's been trending downward in terms of health. It is concerning. He's not getting any younger. Uh, I mean, he's 28 years old, which, you know, you'd think, okay, 28. I mean, Reader's 29, coming off two torn quads, but people are more, opti- you know, uh, optimistic about him. But the whole the, the Bosa injuries is a real thing. I don't know if the Chargers will release him. Uh, we'll, I'll see what kind of happens with that. If he does command a, a pretty high price point, I'm good. But – at the same time, you can't help but think like, where are the Lions going to go in terms of edge? You know, like where's the help coming from? Is it, yeah. I mean, is it going to be a guy like Joey Bosa if he's released? I mean, who's available? Jadavion Clowney still out there? Is he the answer? I don't know. Is it the draft? That's, that's where, where I'm that's a little where worried. Tough. That's where it's I'm tough. I'm not going to say I'm like super worried. I'm just very, very like what, what's going to like Hutch needs something on that other side. You need yeah. something to take away to help Hutch out. And and we're like the options are, and I know it's only three days in, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And a lot of the names that are on these lists, like they're going to places, they're getting signed. They're like, you're yeah. going to have to end up getting like a first set. Like you're going to have to make a move in the draft or like you're going to have to trade and use assets to get someone. Cause what you have now to me, it's just, I'm not I'm not sold completely on that line yet. Well, I'm just I'm not yeah, concerned, yeah. Booner, because the reason is is look at what they're doing in the secondary right now as far as adding man to man corners and what were they having success with last year, blitzing the safety. So if they don't go out and get that 
legit guy. They could more so dip in the draft to get that defensive end. Well, that tells you, okay, they're going to be probably playing a lot of nickel this year. They're probably going to be sending a lot of extra guys. So, yeah, they don't have that bookend just yet. But if they add a DJ Reader and then ever and then they're mixing in Jack Campbell Blitz and they're mixing in Brian Branch blitzing because they can do that because they're legitimate guys on the outside now, they can stick in man coverage. They can compensate for that. So I wouldn't be worried because Brad knows if there's a if there's a void, he knows about it. And if he's not going to address it, there's something he's doing to kind of overlap it and over and kind of just equal it all out. It, I don't know mm-hmm. if that makes sense, but that's what I, I'm not concerned really. No, it it makes it makes, it makes sense. sense. I, I want to give a t- shout out to Demetrius Hurt for becoming a Crunch member. We appreciate Let's you, my man. Um, Steve Wilds, and uh, we love Steve. He's a member. He's a valued member of the program. He says, you were all cool yeah. with it yesterday. Now you're panicked. I, I wouldn't necessarily say we're panicked. Uh, it's more of curiosity. I, I, I just, I'm curious, just because if Brad goes out, like, again, you have the option. Is it draft? There's some edges. Uh, there's still uh, post-June cuts that are going to happen. Guys are going to be available. Like, it's not – I think Steve would agree. We all agree. Like, we said this, too. The Lions ed, – like, edge is still a need. Like, no one's arguing against that at all. Like, I mean, it's still a need. You upgraded your corner. You upgraded your defensive line. Assuming they get DJ Reader, we'll see. Hopefully they do. They secure that deal. But, like, it's pretty common. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. I think all Lions fans would say yes to that. Are you worried about the the opposite side of Aiden? Everybody would say yes. I don't. We saw how it affected him. Like yeah. we, we saw, he had 11 and a half sacks and like we, we single-handedly saw exactly how it affected him. That that was like a thing. Like you don't have that many pressures and that many quarterback like hits and like you don't have the stats you did kind of on that PFF side. Like if, if you turn those into sacks if you have someone on that defensive line helping you out and winning those one. Like that's just how it, that's how it works. Like um, what's his name? I'm trying to think. Um, And the Bengals, what's his name? Um. Later? Had 17 no, had 17 sacks this week. Trey, Trey, Henderson. Henderson. Trey, Henderson. Trey Henderson, dude. Like he had 70 sacks. It's because he had a DJ reader. He had guys on that line that actually helped him out a little bit and opened things up. And that was something Hutch didn't have. And you can see it all around the league. Like guys who have that other side, they they typically show out a little bit more. And that's just where you're at. And and again, and I, and I see I get the comments where it's like, well, yesterday you guys were up like a little bit different. It's like I don't think our minds changed from yesterday. I think it was more so yesterday, like it wasn't like a, a, a it's all over because you didn't get like a Daniel Hunter. Like, no, you could, there's still pieces to add. We're just basically saying, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to add, are you going to add a piece? Cause all you need to do is just add an upgrade at that position and things turn around. Like it's, it's literally like the corner position. You don't need to go out and get a Legaria Sneed. You just need to upgrade. That's all. You already went to the NFC championship game upgrade. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, shout out also certified supply chain professional gifted one crunch uh time membership we thank you for that and i also decided you know what boys let's just throw five in there for the for the people let's go let's just throw five in there for everybody uh if you're tuning in if you made it uh, up until 9 23 p.m eastern time there you go there's five random people that got a crunch membership uh i i want to transition here speaking of kind of the defensive line john we asked john about it we got we gave our input on it but somebody that lucas has been kind of preaching about for a while here and you first brought up the concern with Dan Skipper and, uh, of course, this player, Eric Armstead, who plays actually, ironically enough, with the brother of Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, formerly played with Nick Bosa. Lucas, this mm-hmm. might be the option. This it might, might be. be. I, I We like DJ Reader for what he can do in the run game, but Eric Armstead, again, when he is healthy, he's not the Eric Armstead of old where he's getting 11 and a half sacks and was getting signed to five-year extensions. He's not that player. But this man is 6'7". He's able to go inside the tackle and outside the tackle. He's not going to be killing guys on the edge, but he can make an impact, especially in the run game. He can do it all as far as what the Detroit Lions ask for out of their defensive tackles and defensive ends. The question is, is he going to be willing to probably take a little bit less money because they're not going to be willing to throw a top dollar at him? And with him being in contract extension talks with the 49ers, and then they obviously split apart, I'm I'm worried about what he's asking for money-wise. But if they bring him in, I'm, I'm not going to be as excited as DJ Reader just because of what they can do, but I'm going to be hyped because he's a guy that can make an impact and he's going to be another developmental piece for Aline McNeil and Aiden Hutchinson as well. He's a yeah, giant. I'm, he's he is. He's a big, you see, remember what he did in the playoffs? Like, he showed <laughs> out. Like, 
he went nuts. Mm-hmm. It felt like in the playoffs. So I'm, I, I don't, I think it's a good piece. I'm not going to sit here and say like, Oh no, I don't want him. Like, no, that's not, again, it's like anything you can do this defensive line to upgrade it. I'm all in for that. What do you guys think? And I kept seeing comments um earlier when we were talking about it. What about like bringing him and D, uh, DJ Re- reader? Like, is that yeah. like, what are you guys thoughts? Like, do you think that can work both of those guys and um kind of a little rotation that, that boosts that rotation up like that. It could uh, work. Puts, what they would, it's an what upgrade, they would do I'm is they would, you. They'd probably try to run Armstead more at the outside because if you have DJ Reader, there's no moving him around. You know, no. he, he's staying inside. No he's playing a lot of three tech sometimes think, too. And But the thing is, is just I don't think there's any chance of that happening. It, think just about for that, though, fellas. You had like – nice, so Go that get pushes, an edge. That, go that, get that a real edge. The, that pushes the commish down, Josh Pascal. Like, Do you guys remember the argument that we had or the discussion that we had um, like, a, like about a month ago to where – I told you guys, like, I don't care. Like, remember, and, and you guys, we had the conversation, should the com- they should cut the commish? And I said no, because I feel like that you can push him down the depth chart, and he is, like, a very, very good, like, three, four guy coming in as a rotation like he did two years ago. You bring these guys in, guess what that mm-hmm. does? Pushes him down, pushes the Pascal down. Now you just upgraded those top guys. Now you still have the commish who doesn't have to worry about being the number one. Doesn't have to worry about beating the starter and sitting there and producing eight, nine, ten sacks a game. He just needs a couple or a, a year. He just needs a couple for you throughout the year and big moments. That's all you need. And I, I, oh, I would have loved that if, if those alerts come out tomorrow. I, the I'm thing about Eric, the, the thing about Eric Armstead is he's not. He's a he's a he's base. He is a defensive tackle now, right? Like that's that's kind of what his yeah, role but was. There's like that's situationally. Like if you want to bring a linebacker down and you want to put in, I mean, you put like if you have a Leem and then you have a uh, Reader, you put Armstead on the outside. You know what I mean? Because that like remember when they'd have Jack off the edge last year, and then yeah. it'd be like it would would be one of those packages. Yeah, that came. That was that was, yeah. that, was hey, weird, yo, that was a weird way to say that. I Paul. I was like, whoa, Jack bro. Campbell off the edge. Thank you. One yeah, of those type you. of packages. <laughs> Jeez. I yeah, was well, like, I don't, I don't know if I was the only one that knew that. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I, I, after I said it, I was like, that, mm, then you caught it. Good catch by you, Boone. Thanks. Well, the, the way you said it, it's hard not to catch that one. I was like, whoa. <laughs> hey, no need to fear, hey, no need to fear, guys. Uh, well, you know, you got our boy uh, Eduardo. I'm convinced if Pasca, uh, Pascal got 10 sacks, Jeff would bust. Well, it's aggressive to say I would do that. But, hey, you know what, Eduardo? I would be extremely happy. I don't know if it's going to happen, though. Uh, I I mean, they got some depth. I mean, they got some depth, but it's not. You would need like a significant jump from from somebody if they don't do anything. Let's say they get DJ Reader, maybe they draft an edge, depending on who that is. If they get like a Jared Verse, yeah, hell yeah, yeah, that, there's your edge right there. But let's just like take the draft out of it. Let's just say that Brad walks in, goes into the season, is like, hey, we got what we got. You're going to need Josh Pascal, James Houston to be like James Houston of rookie year. Like something's going to have to happen. So I'm curious. I think Brad's got some up his sleeve, if I had to, if I had to be honest. I do him. too. There's something. There's no yeah. way he's just standing pat like this as far as addressing the defensive edge if he doesn't have a plan. Did you guys I see think, what? I, no, I think on, just the, the fact that DJ Reader's coming in tomorrow. Like I think that the, if I had to put my confidence level on that getting done, I would just say it's like 70%. Like it, like it's it's over fifty percent. Like with with the Bengals going in a different way direction. Like I would have, to, I would say that was like Brad Holmes, one of his main targets. And and it sounds like if if the medicals go well, I would say why wouldn't he want to be a Detroit Lion and come contend for a Super Bowl? Like why would you not want to? Like who? No way he would pick the Titans over the Detroit. Like I would be shocked if that happened. Would be shocked. Well, you know what? I, you know what? I wouldn't be shocked by right the Cowboys. ML football report. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are quote working on something. End quote per NFL. What, what time was this? This was probably what? What did you say happened right before the show, Booner? Hold on, oh. hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on, hold on. oh, oh okay, you're, you're, you're okay. You laid yep. it up. Oh, gotcha. they're, they're, they were working on something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that something was Eric Hendricks. Uh, that's who they. <laughs> that's who <laughs> they were. <laughs> that's who they were working on. Pause. I don't know. That sounded weird. But hey, Eric Kendricks was the big, hey, big Cowboys free agency signing. All Ah, in. All all in, in, baby. All in. Not like Skip Bayless all in, but, you know, (laughs) different all in. Come on. What are we doing? 
I mean, you think, you oh think my any, any team thinking about their off seasons, just think of the Cowboys, man. They're like, what the, what the hell is going on in Dallas? The shit's just, I mean, it's funny to w- watch from afar, but whew, tough. The Panthers look like they're doing a master class right now compared to the Cowboys. At least the Panthers trade for Deontay Johnson. They, have, they got another wide receiver, too. I can't think of off the top of my head, but they're adding pieces. The Commanders, who just oh, got yeah. Dan Quinn, they're stealing all their players, and what do they do? Eric Kendricks, who's a solid <laughs> linebacker, but they need they need way more than a linebacker. You can go, you can find an Edwin Cooper in the f- second, third round if you want to do that. If you're Dallas, that, can, uh, what's I'm, the, I'm the situation? When, as a Cowboys fan, I would love to talk to some Cowboys fans. Like Jerry Jones is basically a GM, right? He is so past his time. There is no reason. Like, think about the difference between G- like if you wanted a GM. Think about having Jerry Jones break down prospects and Brad Holmes. Like, I, I was just, I saw a video of Jerry Jones today and I'm like, there's no way you could sit there and tell me to my face that Jerry, like, uh, someone's going to be like, yeah, I'd rather have Jerry Jones picking my prospects for the draft and free agency and trades over a guy like Brad Holmes. Like, that is just, it's just nuts to me. It's nuts that they still have the situation going on that they do, and he hasn't been able just to take a step back and be like, let me let someone like who knows what they're doing take a control of this. You know what's crazy to me, fellas? Like, and I, We're kind of at the time now. It's 930. I want to bring this up because like, I, I, I saw this, and I'm like, there's no way we're not going to talk about this. No way, no how, as Rob Parker says. Like, oh I saw gosh. this on my timeline. I'm like, we're feeding this to the, the pack of wolves. What the hell is this? I didn't, what I saw the- it. I didn't see what this was. I didn't see okay. what it was yet. I saw Aaron so, Rodgers in the news. It, it says, I'll read it. I'll zoom Crazy, a little bit. Dude. So, wild 94% of Americans, this is per ML football, 94% of Americans would rather have Jets QB Aaron Rodgers as the vice president of the U.S. over current VP. Oh, uh, well, that makes sense. Uh, Kamala Kam- Kamala Harris. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not political, so I, you know, don't ask me about my opinion on that. Clay Travis put out, would you rather have Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> this is a serious poll. It had almost 40,000 votes, 94%. Oh in favor of having Aaron Rodgers as the vice president of the United States. Like, what, I, what are we doing? I'm so, voting for Aaron. I'm voting for Aaron in that situation. This, this, is, this is the call I'm saying. Uh, it's, I agree. I would vote for Aaron in that situation, but it's kind of biased because that guy's probably like a sports podcaster or something like that, and all the people are – all his followers like, follow him, know Aaron Rodgers and – Obviously, yeah. they know Camilla Harris. Clay, like, the president? Owns, uh, sports thing, I think. Vice president? What are we doing? I mean, hey. here's the next tweet. Breaking news. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has chosen his running mate, and the person has accepted the position per ABC. Finalist Jesse uh, Ventura has not received an offer per his son. Aaron Rodgers, the vice president, seems oh, to be in God. play. <laughs> and and on top of this, I heard this Bro. as well. On top of this is they're announcing it. I, I, I've been following this a little bit. Like, I've what? been seeing things in the football world. They're announcing it in like, a, in, like, a week or two. And they're announcing it in, I think, Northern California, which guess who's from Northern California? Aaron Rodgers. Dude. So, not nah, it's a legit thing. I think it's like a le- – it's this isn't like a fake thing. I know, like – some people might be like ML football put it out like no like think about other what people, Robert Stallings like right now. <laughs> oh, dude, think Robert about being Stiles a New York. Like, think about being a New York Jets fan. Like you're like you're about to get Aaron Rodgers back, and he's about to be like, "I'm good. I'm gonna go try and run for vice president." And, and then I'm not <laughs> playing anymore. He's gonna be running out of the tunnel instead of the American flag. It's gonna be an RFK flag. That's yeah. Crazy. There, if, he, yeah. if he does it. <laughs> Dude, the thing is, it's like if he does it, he can't. I don't think he's going to be able to play next year. Like even if he runs, because the elections in what November. So that. like he's not, he's not going to be able to. Guys, it like I'm I'm not kidding. It's picking up traction. Like it is like there there's people they talked about it on the Pat McAfee show today. I didn't get to listen to the whole thing, but it's picking up traction. Like to where they would get mauled. It's mm-hmm. it's just Aaron <laughs> Rodgers wanting attention. That's the same old yeah, bit that's... with him. Yeah. That's that's what it want to know why I think it's true though because of that and it's not that it's because the Pat McAfee show Aaron Rodgers was on a retweet do, doing ayahuasca and said that it got <laughs> leaked and he they didn't want anyone to put it out yet because they didn't so he was out doing ayahuasca there's a picture of him with um 
Uh, who's the safety that just went from? Oh, Jordan Poyer. He was with Jordan Poyer doing ayahuasca, and he it got leaked, and they didn't want him. To, they didn't want it to get leaked while he was in. He was in like Puerto Rico or something. Like this is like He's a legit. I'm telling you guys, the reports. This is like a legit thing to where it was like they didn't want it to get leaked. Someone leaked it. I think like the New York Post leaked it, and like things started happening, and he was in Puerto Rico. It, it, this this was like a, a this is like a real thing. I I, th- I could be losing my mind, but like <laughs> my sources, dude. From what I've read, this might be a legit thing. <laughs> well, no, it is. It should not be. Uh, no, there's no way really he wins. He, there's no way he wins. It's like an independent uh, party, <laughs> and it, it, he, so it's not like he's not one of the main. I don't know much about politics. He's not like one of the main parties. Like, I just don't think there's a way he went. Like, he's like stops playing football to go lose an election. Like, that's crazy, dude. You guys want to see the man who oh, shocked right. half of the Detroit sports market on social media? Jeffrey Collum. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Proud father of three. Gotta respect it. This, <laughs> this man has a watermark on his profile. Oh, no. oh god. Damn oh. it. And, and here's the thing, guys, and this is more of a like an educational thing for people that don't maybe like see it. Like when you're on social media, like look at all the BS. I mean, this guy's just putting out and it's like popping off. I mean, it like discussed a short term deal with well, the Cowboys have discussed a short term deal. Like he's just he's quoting stuff from Dennis Wick. <laughs> <laughs> just a He's rabbit the father, father of four. <laughs> Why does everybody have their kids in the bio, man? What's going on, oh. Dennis? Hey, Dennis, this might be this is definitely a real guy. So whoever this is, hey, clean suit, clean yeah, suit, Dennis. It's, it's a it's a clean suit, but Jeffrey, it's a it, column, like it's just. I, and he's a Boston news sport. He's a Boston sports news reporter who had insight on Josh Reynolds. Best believe. It was he's, always he's Jeffrey Collins. In. He's tapped yeah. in. Yeah, Boston just when you thought. Reporter. Yeah, well. He just joined, too, in May 2023. <laughs> oh, no, that was last year. <laughs> Never mind. My bad. My bad. That's on A me. year ago. A year he's ago. He's been in a, year, for a year. year? He's got some skin in the game. Dude, like, I I, I think this is funny because it happens. I mean, I've, I've, fallen, I've fallen for it before, too. I ain't going to lie. Like, you'll see t- Twitter accounts that look alike. And I've seen people that buy verification for their Twitter. Just a troll, like so. I've like been Adam like, hey, verified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. one gets me every time. <laughs> yeah, Dude, every time. What, what gets me yeah. is like when one of you guys or like some people that we're friends with or like that we've previously worked like when someone like will retweet something that's that's fake. Like this has happened with Parker. I know you guys all remember Parker. I think it was him or someone would like send me stuff or like retweet something. I can't remember if it was who it was, but they did multiple times and it was fake. And, and I got, I was like, Oh my gosh. And then I realized I had to break the news to the person, but I've never gotten got like on a timeline, but I've gotten got when people get got and then I get got and I'm like, Oh dude, I'm with it, you. Dude. That's it crazy. Happens. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, it happens. I've gotten, I've gotten it before I tweeted something out like, Oh, look <laughs> at this. And, and they're like, Hey, dumbass, look at the profile. And I look at the, I'm like, <laughs> delete the tweet. Uh, Fake news. Can we get one? Fake, fake news. Not the, <laughs> not the, wrong, wrong. Fake news. Uh, yeah. well, well, we'll get into some mailbags. So get your questions ready, Mike. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, we'll I just get something. our, we'll just get our like consistent mental health update um, for all Red Wings fans. Anything going on? Anything you want to talk about here? Pistons, I know they're. Like, I mean, they, they, they fought at practice. Is probably the most fight they've had, and you know, like a week and a half. <laughs> so, uh, it's good for them, you know. Get that anger out. Hopefully, it translates to next game, and you show some uh, some hype going into the next game. But not not too much. I know Dylan Larkin will be reevaluated Saturday, so um, prayers that he Ooh. comes back and saves this team. But they need a win, man. They need a win. But Jeff, I see your Pistons got their twelfth win. Jalen Duran had. 24 points and 23 rebounds. So after getting ejected, he bounced back, man. That, that's cool. It's not give wins. up on that basketball team just yet, boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have to say. <laughs> 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 so again, like, I, I don't want to really talk Pistons until maybe someone gets fired or something happens. Imagine winning, like, less than, like, 18 games in back-to-back years and not one person loses their job. Well, I guess have, Dwayne Case. You don't have to imagine that. It's you know right what now. I mean in the front office. Jeff's quiet over there. 
I is just, Troy Weaver going to get fired, Jeff? Is that going to happen? Hope so. He's screaming at Why would he get he's fired? He's going to be cooking again. this summer. This is the no, summer okay. he's going all in. All right. All right. <laughs> it takes time. It takes time, man. You got to give him some time. <laughs> it takes a lot of time, man. Not we're gonna be like we're time, gonna be like in man. 2030. He's gonna be the GM, and we're like 15th straight year at 15 wins. Just give him some time. Yeah, promise yeah, he's, he's gonna get lottery us picks than he's had wins. That's, honestly, <laughs> and and most of them are here. Take Cade Cunningham. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, it's Look like, those veins in his forehead. That man hey, is over there I, just going through it. Yeah, it's it sucks, man. I mean, I I it, yeah. I told you, Mike, I don't even know they played tonight. That's where I'm at mentally. You know, like I've tried my best to just let go. You know, if you really love something, you have to just let it go. You know, oh like it's like it's like it's like you let a, like a wild animal go into the floor. <laughs> like you're like, hey, I love it. You can't keep it. You know what I mean? You got to just let it go. Let it go into the wild. If it dies by another wild animal, then let it, you know, it's not your it's out of your control at that point. So that's what I had to do before. with the Pistons. For a while there, I was hanging on. I was hanging on, hanging on. Now I'm like, you know what? You got to let it go. So that's my speech. That's fair. Uh, but they suck ass just to get, you know, right to Shout it. Out Jalen Duran, though. Yeah, Duran, Duran's a dude. I mean, you look at some players. Like, I like the I like players they have. That's the that's the unfortunate part. It's just, you know, it, when Man's you see got Taj a lot of Gibson, potential. When, you, when you see Taj Gibson come in for a 10-day contract, sit on the bench, and get James Wiseman to motivate him to make a turnaround – hook shot i mean and he celebrates and he's cheering him up like i love that great you get veteran presence in there but like that's what they needed they needed more veterans and they cut half of the guys they got that were better. Yeah. but yeah. hey you know to be know, honest though, did, look, you guys want me to be real with you i just wish like and I, and I can't wait for us to get to a point to where like we have like these three or four like building blocks on the Pistons team. I just can't wait to get to a point to where we can actually like break all this down because I feel like what's been happening the last two years has been so repetitive and like it, it's just like what else can we say? What else can be said about the Pistons? I, I give well, kudos to Pistons, uh, you know, people out there. Shout out Sean Murphy. I know you do from half court, like people who who hold it down with that stuff because it's just like how like it's 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 like what wh what more can you say is all i have like what more can oh, we can yeah, break it well, all down and it's just like it's so repetitive at this point so it's like it's either fire troy weaver or make some sort of mo like make some things happen i don't know i i i, I, I consider myself a basketball savant and a guy because i that's been that was my go-to growing up and and i don't even i I don't even know. I don't even the starting know. Starting lineup just do. doesn't fit. It's not like a mold together, and they need to make a change. And it's probably going to start with Jaden Ivey. It just needs to happen already. How's your boy doing? Oh, uh, this is, I think that was a personal <laughs> Jaden Ivey injured. thing. That was personal towards Jeff, if no one realized that. I think no, that but that, that's where the change is going to start. You're not trading Cade Cunningham. You're not trading Jalen Duran. And the rest of the starting lineup is kind of ass, anyways. So. <laughs> hey, if you want to, if you want to hear my Pistons thoughts, just, you go check it out from half court for now because right now it's all Lions. Uh, but from half court, we're doing a good job. Yeah. I, we talk all Pistons, all things NBA. Uh, but yeah, I just that's like my you know me, Sean, Troy, lock in. I get to vent. We all get to vent, and then after that, it's like, <laughs> well, it's, see you later. You know, yeah, <laughs> well, like Neil Rule. Well, yeah, see it's you later. like a therapy, just a, a, a therapy, it therapy is, subject. Has, but, I can get that out. <laughs> been awesome. Uh, Eduardo O'Neill, mailback. How old? How would y'all feel about this if either Verse, Latu, or Turner dropped to like 16-ish? We trade up using the third, and then we grab the best guard available in the second. This will leave us with no third-round pick. Uh, or fourth-round pick. Turner dropped? I mean, Turner ain't dropping. But no, he I'm not. That's honestly the off. range of like – that would be the range, Lucas, of like a, a Latu and a Verse kind of though. That, around yeah, that range. between like 16 and 25 probably i mean i dream situation and i'm sure we'll do this and i'll do this in a mock draft coming up but trade up for latu because verse is very good but latu has an elite ceiling as a pass rusher and he's not mm -hmm. the best in the run game but he definitely is solid and could hold his own <laughs> and i i said it when we were talking about the one time i'm not saying he's going to be that player but the way that he uses his hands and the way that he uses the pass rushing ability it was a lot of like tj watt coming out of wisconsin so i think his ceiling is sky high compared to Verse, who has a nice ceiling, but Latu's ceiling is a lot higher. I'd trade uh, up for Latu in the second. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't hate trading up for either edge. I mean, you if you want to get a guard in the second, I, I'm... 
Yeah, that's that's it. I can't wait. We're gonna get into more draft yeah. stuff because you could argue, like I could argue, I want a corner in the second. Yeah, I mean, and Brad can still move up in in the draft, regardless. Sure. Like even if they like, he can very well be like, you know what? Yeah, we'll take out assets from next year and let's move up in this year's yeah. draft. Yeah, he knows how to All add right, capital too, so he's he'll easily be able to figure out a way to add some more capital, trade up, make a move. He knows what he's doing. Uh, Steve, leave a mail mailbag merch update. I'm glad you asked, Steve. Uh, we're in the lab. I'm, we're trying to get. Actually, we need. To, we're, we're getting a website developed right now. We already have the uh, address already paid for and everything like that. We we're getting someone to build the website. Then we can set up the shop. Uh, I honestly, it's, this is new for me in terms of like developing a website and setting it up. Yeah. I didn't know you're that in you the needed, lab. I didn't know you needed a website to get the merchandise set up to the website. I mean, I knew there was a way to do it, but. <laughs> It's complicated, boys. It's uh, I guess like I'll, when we I'll first started this and everything that entails with it, <laughs> but web development. <laughs> when you first started it, when we like everything starts going, you're just like, oh yeah, we could just do merch. We could just do this. It's like, oh, no, boys, uh, you need yeah. somewhere to sell it. Right, you need yeah. someone to make it. You need this. You need that. It's like, oh, distribution. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, there's everything. a lot to it. I know. I feel like we tell people, but like, it's coming. Uh, Zach says, "Mill back." Evan Brown is my top target in free agency for the next signing. I hear you guys. Pr- I hear you. I hear you guys being pretty optimistic. Evan Brown returning to Detroit. I've to heard the, I've heard it. I, I don't know if I've heard him in talks mm. with the Lions or anything, though. I'm gonna look that up here on on the I know. Twitter spaces. Honestly, I, I don't even, I like that. Yeah. I, I feel like, like it would be it would be like the Graham signing last year. Like you're like, oh, when you yeah. sign him, it's like, oh, he'll probably be a backup. And then if there's an injury that happens, then He'll be able to start, but I mean, Evan Brown, you talk about if Frank goes down, we got the other guard position. And even if you draft like a rookie and he starts to struggle, okay, you can put Evan Brown in there and he's going to be like five, six a year. Probably he's not going to be anything crazy. Yeah. Cause what do you go? He left to Seattle last year, played center mm-hmm. for him. I don't hate it. He, the Didn't best off of the lineman. Uh, he, hate it but that. yeah, you're right. Low, low. I mean, besides cross, who's yeah. cross is the best. He was a, he's a beast. But when he was here, though, Evan Brown was dude. He was he was like this. He was keeping this thing together. That was the year what Frank went down, I think. Yeah, and he played center. I think it was nah, very yeah. serviceable. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right there. Uh, let's see, uh, Papa Papa D's mailbag. Are the Wings playoff hopes too far to reach? Mike? Uh, no, they're they're still going to be in the mix. I, like I said, said you got to get Dylan Larkin back Saturday. Hopefully, you get a win tomorrow, but. No, they're not out of reach. There's still a lot of games left, and the Islanders are going to be right there with them. And speaking, they're a good team, but they'll still be in the mix, man. It's not out of reach. A lot of a lot of hockey to be played. Got a big bet on them. I need that one. Bad. Yeah, that. we're banking on some Booner Bucks here. I mean, we Jeez. got some some Booner Bucks. We need to win. Yeah, yeah. Booner, yeah, path I point. A, so I could put a new future. I can win that one and put a new future on the Detroit Lions to win the Super Bowl. You know? Uh, well, uh, here, let me let me see here. Uh, because I want to get someone new that didn't ask a question before I get to repeated questions. Um, here we go. Big Con 51. Oh, this, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. I, that's so, one yeah, of the best questions is. of all time. Oh, the Pistons mathematically eliminated from the 2025 playoffs. Um, Big Con, I think they're eliminated from the entire NBA as a whole. Like, as, as a league. Like, I, I think they're just, I don't know. Get man. ready to learn Chinese. No. <laughs> Yo, okay. You know what? That was out of, that was out, that was out of pocket. That was out of pocket. There's a good day. Yeah, I don't good. know. I think everything's fair game when it comes to the Detroit. Dude, they've right won now. like 30 games and yeah. out of 160 something. God, nothing's out of pocket. Like, there's not a franchise in sports right now that's comparable to them. Gentry, am I wrong with hockey? Is there like just a bum hockey the Pan- team? That- hey, the Panthers. They they're they they have a future. Look what they're doing in the offseason right now. They just traded for Deontay Johnson. They at least have something stable in the wide receiver core. They got a decent return on Brian Burns. They got more life than the, the fucking Pistons. I mean, you want to talk about bad owners? They both got that going on. Is this guy real? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Is that the is that the Jeffrey Collum? Bro? We gotta go. We gotta get him on the show. Jeff, yeah, you want to tap in real quick? Reach out to us. We'll send you a link real quick. 
There's no way someone. Bro, what the hell, dude? <laughs> Jeff, the Jeffrey Collum, the man with three kids. Are you father, three man. Proud father, proud Respect father. Yeah. The Boston man. The Boston. Dude, yeah, the Boston. That is funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Are my favorite fans? Are my favorite fans doing? What the fuck, dude? Where's Jeffrey <laughs> go? Oh shit, dude! I feel like Jeffrey, uh, reach out to one of us. Let's let's get you on the show here. Come on! That's hilarious. Oh, hey, that was shout like out to the goat behind... tapping in. Hey, yeah, shout out to hey, the goat. That's Roman, wow, shout man. out, Roman. That's the goat. I feel like we're in the house Imagine. that Roman built. You know what I mean? That's like it. this is literally. Like, literally I mean, yeah, literally the, the border of this. <laughs> yeah. We are surrounded by Roman right now. That is funny as hell, man. I feel like we just had one of those moments like, what's behind door number one? And then Jeffrey Gollum <laughs> comes up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got some more sources here in the in the uh, in the chat. He's dropping Yo, news live. Very Get the hell out of out here. Hey, hey, this is Jeff the Jeff right here. Get the hell out of here. All right. Kadarius Tony, no. Mm -mm. No, it's fucking get that, no, get that dude does not have hands. Jeffrey at all. Collum, a part of the Booner Path, baby. He doesn't have hands. Uh, Jeffrey Collum is a part of the Booner Path, dude. That is funny, man. Uh, that's why I love Good this stuff. show because you just have random, random. Is that Luke? Is that formerly uh, Lucas's Wi Fi? I, I, it was that. I, I think a, that I, I, I like that idea. I like the rabbit hole you're creating there. Yeah, like have some fake. Yeah, I like, I love it. It's a great, I, I don't know who's doing mm -hmm. it, but. That's a great fucking bit, elite man. chat. Elite chat. I love yeah. I yeah. love the chat is it is I love them. I love them. All right. Well, we'll get to the next, the next one here. Dante 151 mailbag. If the Lions stay at 29, do you want the Lions to draft Chop Robinson or Darius Robinson? Darius. 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 <laughs> are they related? Is that, is that is that a known thing? Those guys are related? No, that's just a very common last name, Boone. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Yeah, like the Robinsons. Yeah, you know, B. John like Robinson, that, that Denard Robinson, yeah. Aldrich Robinson. You can keep going. Chops get a lot of love, man. You notice that? He was getting hated on at first, too. Yeah, like lately. I'm well, saying lately. Because you, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's weird. Like people are because of the combine, bro. You, combine yeah. combine yeah. time. Yeah. Look at him in the combine. Shut I mean, up. there was the, there was you know with the combine there were state. there was people before the combine that were like, oh, uh, like I could look at him like a Michael Parsons, like he he's got that level, and, and it was just like, uh, and maybe not, and then the combine brought <laughs> that down a lot, and it might have been it might have been your guy, uh, Lucas Lewis Riddick that said that it was either him or Dan Orlowski. it was one of those like big time guys that mentioned that, and I was like, oh wait I'd, a second, I'd be ready to plant the flag that Chop Robinson is not a dude in the NFL. I'd be I'd be willing to put a large amount of money that it's more so happens that he does not pan out than what he than he does i i would love i would love darius robinson though to be honest i think that's like perfect on the other side like if if you're at 29 he was like the best edge available give me darius robinson i i think he's gonna be a dog i'm gonna get to chef's question first then i'll get to the previous question just again again guys we uh, we, we favor the crunch members especially when it comes to mailbag chef asked mailbag why do people discount the fact that this happened lots was medically retired from football at washington after a preseason neck injury in 2020 i mean i i don't know about discounting because that's the reason why he's falling you yeah. know like that yeah. that is a huge reason why people he might be available later in the first not later but towards the middle later half like in the late teens yeah, I think he'd be right around like I know Byron Murphy's more of an interior guy, but he would be in the Byron Murphy range if they didn't have if he didn't have the neck injury. Yeah, I mean his tape is elite. He did good at the no. combine. <laughs> uh, he's bad. No, Dennis Wick, man. <laughs> I knew, I knew that one was coming. I knew that one was coming. Who, who's Dennis, Dennis Wick is boy. We got wait. That's the father of four. Is it? That's yeah. hilarious. Father of four, know. the New York man. This is the That's New York the father of four, man. The father of three. He had to dunk Andrew. I'm not going to lie. I thought you said the father of Thor. I was like, no. oh, I, what? Father I, I of four, Booner. Uh, yeah, Dude, I got what is now. happening? I mean, we, I mean, did Dennis Wick, we got <laughs> Jeffrey Pollock. Like Beetlejuice. Hey, hey you sons oh, of bitches. So hey, you guys. You guys are fucking up social media right now. <laughs> you guys are doing right now. Sports media and sending out these fakes. Yeah, your, I don't know what your sources are, fellas. Especially you, Jeffrey Collum. But hey, tricking you're tricking a lot of people, man. I'll tell you that. 
let's uh <laughs> kind of funny seeing it i'm not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> yeah just that's like the... one of my favorite things like to see just any like i just love like dupe accounts just getting people like especially like if it's like like i've seen like you've seen espn people you've seen big time people get dupe it is one of the best things in the world like i wish i was one of those people who like my hobby was to just try and dupe as many people as i could i wish i had that i wish i could do that. <laughs> yeah that's kind Jeremy of funny Fowler got duped the other day it was bad it's he like the... re he retweeted something about patrick queen going to the seahawks and it was just some random account like dennis <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's the, it's, it is the best thing of all time it happens to everyone like i'm sure adam Sh i'm sure shefty's gotten duped before might have oh, yeah. to go a little farther back but i'm sure he's gotten duped that it's just like Dennis Rick uh, Wick and Jeffrey Collum in a basement, just like you got him. I got his ass. <laughs> you just got, got him. him. We're gonna see him walking around the draft when we go when we go to Detroit. <laughs> imagine, dude, I just imagine them having like a board of like big names and just crossing yeah. them. Like, got Shefty, got Rap. Dude, it's kind of that'd be. I mean, hey, people got all these alts or all these burners to talk shit. Like, if you're if you're gonna do something kind of funny with it, it's got to climb. It's it's his burners for sure. Oh, yeah, for don't, sure. It's don't, a, don't. He, he hates people with credibility because he has none. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not a Dove fan. Shout out. I like ML football. I don't like Dove. Two different. No, Dove isn't a guy. We'll go well, Dove from now on. This, nah, Zach says, uh, real name. like the South Park episode, say Biggie Smalls three times in a mirror. <laughs> <and he appears. laughs> it's Dennis Wick and Jeffrey Gallo. <laughs> Oh uh, well, this is for you, Boone. I mean, you can. This is how far are you willing to go for a dynasty, Boone? I mean, let's be real here. All the cards um, on the table. <laughs> this is just out of pocket, man. Like this is I aggressive. You don't have game. to answer that, Boone. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm not. No comment. I don't know. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> Like well, what on to us. Let's move. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so what? Why is it, dude? Why is it? This is so good. This this is like fucking a plus execution between these guys. I mean, this is uh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! This why a hey, you have moments like this. You gotta, you gotta appreciate it. That's funny as hell. That is funny as fuck. Love what we do, baby. Hey, shout all out right. to the two fifty two in the chat. <laughs> Hold it down all the way till what time is it? Nine fifty seven. Yeah, that's it. Hey, you guys are real yeah, ones, man. man. And we we know we take note of that. We do. We notice you. I Ian Olson, mailbag trade for Quiddy Pay and pair him up with Hutch again. Is Quiddy Pay available? Is that a real thing? No, you gotta no. But I mean, hey, he's, he's a good I'd year. Like, I, I would prefer DJ Reader, but I'm not gonna yeah. hate it. Uh, Big Con 51, great show, guys. Keep killing it. Uh, Appreciate you're gonna you, blow Big up, Con. man. Big Con, you've been here since the jump, too, man. Not that it completely, not that again, if you were here now or it doesn't matter, but we appreciate oh, all you guys. People that we with didn't us even talk Con. about this, did we? I don't, I think we talked about Khalil Mack and stuff. I don't think we actually talked about the Mike Williams thing. Uh, well, I disregarded I it, Lucas. Yeah, yeah, what I mean, come on, what are we doing? Lucas? I think we're all on the same page, to be honest. No, I do not want anything to do with Mike Williams. The man has a great talent, but he's maybe healthy for a quarter of the season. He's going to be commanding top dollar. And at the end of the day, you don't need him. And he's it's just no, he's a headache. I guarantee that it would be look good on the fantasy team and look good on your Madden team, but in real life. Mike Williams is not needed. Go in the draft to get a wide receiver, re-sign Josh Reynolds. No, Mike. Appreciate Williams. that, no, President. No. President. Fake news. P appreciate that, Mr. President. Hey, well, that, okay. yeah, I'm, a, I'm a Lucas. I, I don't want to say. I, I, I told Lucas, but I was like, I don't want to see anyone talk about that. That's not. No, even... it makes no sense. I mean, that, I mean, it, I guess you could argue. Well, they need a true X, and I get like actually. Let's think about it for a second. You would love an X, but you don't need a Mike Williams. Yeah. Give me Ben Skoranek over Mike Williams for the value. Yeah, it's a damn good Trump impression, Adam. He says, is that your Trump impression? Yeah. Yeah, that was Lucas. He crushed what are you going to do about it, Adam? What are you going to do? Not a thing. Oh, you Mike sit Williams back there like The scared little boy you are behind the camera, <laughs> not do anything about it, Adam Baydoon. You're not going to do a thing. You're going to have to sit here and listen to this Trump impression, whether you like it or not. Sit there and like it. Dennis Wick gave us an update. <laughs> Mike Williams yeah, signed. Deal is done. He said, no, no team. 
No <laughs> team. He signed with the NFL. Three years, $75 million. <laughs> Not even a football team. Roger Goodell paid him. Dude, that is wick, man. Oh, geez. Appreciate you guys. It's a fun one. Hell a yeah. lot of fun. Tomorrow, we'll have Mike or Mike on the show. Uh, it'll it, it'll be a lot of fun. Help us kind of break down what's what's to come for the Lions. <laughs> Dennis Wick. Hey, shout out to Dennis Wick. Shout out to Jeffrey Collum. And shout out to every single one of you in the chat uh, for tuning in. Even if you're watching post when we're live, it doesn't matter how long you've been here. But we do appreciate every single one of you. Uh, fellas, I love you guys. Love and you guys. we'll be back tomorrow. You, boys. Another great show planned. Until then, have a great night. Bless night. And we'll catch you.